You a resident? <laughs> <laughs> if you're not a resident, you're not getting into the residence bar. Welcome along to Obviously Fight Talk, episode nine. I was a shout out and a tribute to the man, the myth, the legend, the Gibson doorman, <laughs> um, an old man who absolutely loves his job. But this is Obviously Fight Talk, episode. Do you, know that, do you know what that sounds like? Sorry for interrupt. The Gibson doorman sounds like Jack the Ripper or something. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like it, some more. He may as well be. I know. Yeah. But uh, this is obviously Fight Dog episode 9. I'm joined, as you heard, his beautiful, sultry voice by Robert Pallon, as How always. You, How are you? Fuck, Rob, I'm heartbroken and I'm crestfallen and I'm exhausted. What Oi. a week of oh, MMA. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was a mad week. It was just like. And we'll talk about it all on Obviously Fight Talk. talk. This, is <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a long one, I can feel. Yeah, it. I can feel. Uh, fight out is all. Uh, fight out. A shout out to Fight Star Ireland, the Fighter's Choice. Everything you need under two roofs. Go and check them out. Everything you need. Let's just do everything. You need uh, MMAMix.com They're obviously good Because they're with Obviously uh, Fight Talk And to feelsupreme.co.uk Go and check them out And get 10% off At the checkout By using the code Fight Talk um, That gets you 10% off To look after the Chinese That sorts you out too uh, We're joined this week By uh, Bam at 32 Main eventer uh, Richard Coyley He fought for a world title It didn't go his way So we're glad to say He's coming on to speak To us just about the fight And everything leading up To the fight We're going to be joined by a man that was in the biggest story in mixed martial arts this week he was one part of the fight um, it's Johnny Jitsu Johnny I'm sure if you listen to this show on a regular basis you know Johnny comes on for just getting on with Johnny Jitsu this isn't this this is an interview uh, yep. with John Redmond um, John says some very notable things in it that sort of hit you hard yeah. when he says them um, and then we're going to have all the talk points in MMA this week. We're going to be joined for that by the ringer and MMA fighting journalist Chuck Minnenhall. And then we'll be rounding up the madness that was this week with Daniel Mulvahedi. We'll be covering UFC Fight Night 120. We'll be covering Bama. We'll be covering Bellator. We'll probably speak about that doorman again. But Rob, people, get comfortable. But it's a good one. We'll never let you down. Let's get on Richard Coyley. Uh, so welcome back to obviously Fight Talk and if you're looking on YouTube you will see the face of Bam the face of obviously Fight Talk um, fought on Friday night and Dub in Dublin's 3 Arena on Bama 32 in the main event for the world title unfortunately for Richard it didn't go his way but we're delighted to say he's coming on to speak to us here on Monday so Richard thanks a million for coming back on to obviously Fight Talk me man no worries Les thanks for having us uh, so Richard, straight off the bat, it didn't. Unfortunately, as I said there, it didn't go your way um, on Friday. Just you've had a couple of days to think about the fight now and sort of look back. What's your what's your feelings of the fight now? A couple of days out. When's the rematch? Straight <laughs> <laughs> back in. The uh, <clears throat> no, look, come here. If it is what it is, look, I knew I knew I was in difficulty going into the fight, but I tore my ACL four weeks ago, so you know it was <clears throat> it was a. And I, I think he knew about it as well. Um, you know, in the cage, they kept his corner kept on shouting, "Go for the knee, go for the knee." Um, so he got a hold of it. Look, if he had got a hold of the other knee, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I would, like, I'm confident that I would have escaped or I would, I would have uh, tucked out the end of the round because he didn't even have it locked in properly. Because when he got hold of the knee, though, the stability like there's, there's, there's no stability in the knee anyway. You know, that's why I had the the pattern on it. When he got hold of it, even before he had the thing locked on, it slipped out of place. And I was like, oh, sick. Here we go. But um, look, it was what it was. Fair play to him. He, he was in the cage. He was well within his rights to go for it and take advantage of it. And he did. And, you know, it's, it is what it is now. But look, come here to... It would be very interesting getting a rematch. You know, I, I said it... I said it from the very start. You'll feel the first jab and he panic. And I hit him a jab and he panicked. He was afraid in there. He was very, very nervous. I, I rocked him with a jab right down to. I could see it. I could see it in his face. He felt he, he was rocked. He was dazed, and he went for the shoot straight away after it. Um, that fight, you know, I think I could fight that fight another ten times, and I'd win. So, but look, you know, I don't sound like I have sour grapes either. You know, he, he did what he did. He won. He, he you know, he has a, he, 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 he got the win. He did it against a one-legged man, but, um, look. It is what it is, fair play to him. Just with the injury, uh, which you're saying it happened four weeks out, was that just uh, something, unfortunately, you twinged in training, was it? I, I, I threw a kick. I was doing um, a shark tank and I threw a kick and um, the shin pad got caught 
in the uh, the shin pad got my shin pad got caught in the mat, and as I kicked, my my standing leg stays um, stayed planted, and it, it didn't pivot with the kick, and uh, the thing just snapped. So um, I went got an MRI in Santry. Um, they confirmed that the ACL was was uh, was ruptured, and then. Um, you know, then it was just a decision as to whether I was going to fight or not. And if I had any other fight, I would have pulled out. Mm. But I don't think, you know, this opportunity was too big to miss. You know, I couldn't have guaranteed that it would come along again. Um, so I went in and fight and fought. I think it did a bit. <clears throat> you know, I, I, if the, I really think that I could have, you know, I could fight that fight again. You know, with a you know, once that once the knee is healed up, like I didn't feel I didn't feel any danger on the ground. You know, I was wait, I was patient, and um, you know, I was spoiling him on the ground. I was waiting for him to distribute his weight, and then I swept him. Um, I couldn't when he when he got the knee back. I, I wasn't even comfortable moving anyway because I knew that the knee was gone. I had a roll or I had a uh, something. You know, but either way, it would, you know, we got a hold of it. And, you know, once the once he got a hold of it, before he even locked it on, the stability or the the knee popped out of joint, and I was there. Oh, so here we go. There was, so, a, there, was a lot of, there was a lot of talk leading up to it as well, Richard. But we were talking to you on Friday just briefly when I was talking to you after the fight. The talking didn't end outside the cage. You said when you were when you were in there, you were speaking a lot to one another. Yeah, yeah, it was intense. It was great. You know, the um, he's. <clears throat> I think Alex is used to intimidating people. Um, <laughs> he didn't intimidate me, and I think he was the one that was intimidated. Um, you, you talk about turning into a street fight up until then, you know, not to, not that I agree with street fighting, but I've, I've been in one or two in my day <laughs> when I was a younger man, and uh, so stuff like that doesn't bother me. Um, so in the lead up to the fight, Mark Goddard called us out. He tried to intimidate me again. The two, I was going back. We went back, and I think you could see if you look at the fight, you could see in the in the lead up. I didn't take my eyes off him once. He kept breaking. He kept breaking eye contact. Um, and then, like I said, he felt that first jab and he knew he was, you know, he panicked. He panicked, he went for the shoe. Then he got me taken down, he took me down and he said, um, he was on top and he said, remember you grabbed me by my neck, I'm going to smash your face in. And I said back, try it. And he did. <laughs> he missed. He missed. And then when I swept him, I was there, now I'm gonna smash your face in and he got he looked scared. <laughs> well come here, look, it was good crack and then he as I said he rolled up and he ran. Fair play to him. But um you know after the fight, you know, I respect Alex, you know, he's he's world champion, he really is. he has a knack. I said it before the fight, he has a knack of pulling the bag, pulling the the win out of the bag against fighters, he's not necessarily better than and you know, in this instance he did the same thing, you know, he's a <clears throat> you know, we'll find a way of winning and he did. Um as I said in this instance he did it against a one legged man, but it is what it is, you know. We'll get him again the rematch. We, like I said, we that rematch is made, and um, once the once I come back from the, the once I rehab this knee, you know, I'm fully convinced I'll knock him out. Did anything surprise you about him in there? I was surprised at how easy I I knew I had him timed with that first jab, I had his timing, um, and I saw how much damage I was after doing with that jab. Is this it literally went down to his knees, and I saw the the, the shock in his face. Um, there was a big disparity in speed, a big disparity in power, and when I landed that jab, was there. I'm gonna knock this fella out. Um, but as I said, got down, got went down, and <clears throat> he pulled it out of the bag. Um, just talking no, about the answer, the answer to your question is no. There was nothing. There was nothing to shock me in there. Um, you know, I, I was I was fast than, I was more powerful than, I was more comfortable than him on the feet. Um, the only shot he landed on me was a was a, a sneaky shot when I went to touch gloves on. Um, and he went directly for the knee. So that was it was nothing. Just in regard, you're no. saying a couple of times you've indicated that it seems like you knew about the knee. Do you yeah. reckon? Do you reckon you had a, a scout or someone watching, or maybe oh, someone no outside Bama? No, no idea. I have no idea. I don't want to. You know, we're not going to make mm. accusations or anything like that of people. You know, it is what it is. You know, it's not. Um, he found out we knew. We knew like his corner we were all shouting. Yeah. Go for the knee, go for the knee. Mm. And he went directly for the knee for the with the kick. Um look, I don't I don't particularly care. I don't particularly care now stone, I'm not gonna start what's McCall. The next instance there won't be any injuries, I'll make sure the narrative is there for the rematch. Um 
you know, it's and there'll be a lot of interest with a rematch. I think the the whole the whole fight. Uh, I think everything was entertaining about the whole lead up. You know, you see you see what these events are like in Bama um, and Bellator. You know, by the end, people come to watch their own fighters, and then they start filtering out. And then by the time the main event comes around, it's half full. The place was jammed. Um, you know, everyone wanted to see the fight. The atmosphere was electric. I don't think that's the, I've, I've seen an atmosphere like that since the first UFC came along with Conor Fall. Um And then the lead-up. Yeah. I don't think anyone, whether anyone, whether people like me or dislike me, I don't think they, anyone could say that the lead-up and the build-up wasn't entertaining and they weren't engaged. Um, so... Well, the narrative I, was there for the rematch. It definitely like is in the build up to the fight, all the back and forth. You were on with us. You was you were on everywhere, everywhere I looked, including the buses. I see in your face. <laughs> um, it was something I said to you on the night as well. I says um, half the guard of Khan and Tala took the night off because the majority of Tala was That's in the tree arena. Yeah. Um, but just uh, standing outside of it, what did it mean to you? Like uh, walking out as the main event in the tree arena. That must have been a special moment. That's it's an experience that will stay with me um, for the rest yeah. of my life. Um, it's hard. It's, it's it's hard to you know. It's 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 hard to really explain it unless you ex- you experience it. But like you know, the theme song, you know, you no know, zombie, you know, it's, yeah. it's a great song. I saw it with Ashton Daly, and um, when I went out, the whole place was singing it, and I could feel it was like the energy was tangible. It was, it was you could feel it hit me in the face, hit me all over, and uh, it was goosebump stuff. Mm. Goosebump stuff, and I felt about ten feet tall walking out, and it was, you know, I really thought I was going to run through this guy, you know, right up until the, you know, even on the ground, it was just, I wasn't, I wasn't panicked, it wasn't, um, you know, I didn't, he didn't, he didn't offer me anything on the ground, I didn't, didn't think it was any, any danger, even as I said, if you had a roll onto that, that knee bar on the on the right hand leg of your leg, it wouldn't have been cause for any concern. I was comfortable. But look, here's what it is. It must have been pretty good after the fight as well because when we were in the Gibson, I noticed that there was a lot of people coming up to you and shaking your hand, like congratulating you on the great fight and, and thanking you for the fight. That must have been nice as well, even with the loss. Yeah, well, it was deadly. When I went in, the whole Gibson started singing to me. <laughs> <laughs> singing, um, so, yeah, well, look, the support has been really overwhelming. Like, um, like, like I, I, it's, been, it's been hugely overwhelming. I didn't realise um, it was as big as it was. Um, yeah. You know, like I, you know, I understand I'm a divisive character, and like I make no apologies for that. Mm. Um, so, you know, I also know that, that on the back of this, that I'll probably get some some negative comments as well. But like, I don't, I don't, I don't give a shit to be honest. Um, but yeah, the support was overwhelming, and you know, like I said, I was kind of disappointed that you know <clears throat> when I saw how much how much support was, I was kind of disappointed that I actually went in with the injury. Mm. Um, because I feel like I didn't give the people who came and supported me a fair, uh, a fair uh, shake, and you know, I, I, I think if I could, if I walked out and said, "Listen, Alex is the better fighter, and he won," you know, I could, you know, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And again, I don't want to sound like sour grapes because he won; it was a fight, you know. And if I was in the same situation, I saw he had an injury, I would have gone for it as well. So I'm not, I'm not, um, <clears throat> I'm not saying anything negative about Alex. I just think going better. And what is the plan then with the knee? Are you due surgery? Yes, yes. So um, I mean, in, in two weeks, I have a doctor's letter. <laughs> it's in two weeks anyway. In two weeks from the fight, after the fight. So um, I'm in. Um, I must have rehab. So I might have to get. I might have to get a, a another arm MRI or anything because uh, I think it was further damage done to it. I know you said that um, you weren't going to pull out a fight because of the magnitude of it. But looking back now in hindsight. Do you think you should have? Like, would you have, if you could change it now, would you have pulled out? No. <clears throat> um, I, I, that's, that's, that's probably an unfair question to ask because, because the result didn't go my way. If, you know, if the result had gone my way, if I had, yeah. a, if I had to stay in the field and I knocked them out, you know, I'd be saying, no, I made the right decision. Yeah. <laughs> so the only thing I would say is that it wouldn't, the fight wouldn't have been lost the way it was if I hadn't been injured. You know, that's the only thing I can say. Um, but I was injured, and you got the knee bar on that submission on that knee. Um, so, you know, like in retrospect, 
there's no point in, in, in going with retrospect because um, you know it's, it's unfair. Yeah. It's something as well, Richard. I, I, I spoke to the Gibson about it, especially when you're covering and you're doing media. It's always the guy who got the guy or the girl who got their hand raised that comes into the media room, and this is why I wanted the opportunity to have a chat with you to sort of get your opinion with us here as well. But you know, you see the elation of the victor, and you don't see you know the defeated corner and what goes on but I know you had family around you as well there so how important are the, the people around you be it the training partners family and everything your supporting group I did see it in the hallways I obviously out of respect I wasn't going over to speak to you you know you were surrounded by people who matter a lot more than me saying unlucky to you but how important is that s- don't support don't set yourself short no you're, <laughs> don't set yourself short <laughs> You were the most important person Thank army you. in that arena. There we go. He was waiting for that. <laughs> there we go. I was only feeding you, you know what I mean? I was feeding the compliment. No, but honestly, wait, how important is the, the support of teammates and family around you in, in the in the feed? Because it's the first time you've tasted it as a professional. Um, <clears throat> look, come here. Everyone's like, I, I'm a big boy. Like, come here. I understand that there's, there's going to be a winner and loser, you know. The previous two, shot, two, previous two fights, I was the winner. You know, Um. And I understand that this sport is just very small margins for error in this sport. So, you know, there's very few people that get out of this sport that have a, you know, um, a career, any career of note that won't taste defeat at some stage. This is my time, so I'm, you know, I'm taking a philosophical approach. Um, like I said, I don't think I, I think I was, I think I'm the better fighter. So, you know, it is what it is. You know, we'll, we'll have a soul for a week and then it'll be grand. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> and then I'll get that rematch I'll knock him out and I'll be uh, or if he's still the title holder um, I, I know he likes to be active um, so whoever's the title holder by the time I'm, I'm back around is uh, is going to be first of all they're going to be in for a, a torrid time on social media <laughs> and then you know they're going to get knocked out so if you are a Bama welterweight hit the block button on Richard Coyley <laughs> right now because uh, there's a storm coming in a few months I've already done that there's a few of them that are, have already done it Terence, Terence still has me blocked. <laughs> so he does. But um, whoever, look, whoever's whoever's in the firing line when I when I when I come back and has that belt, you know they're in for they're in for a tired time. Um, however, you know, like I said, you see how much uh, exposure Alex got in the in the build up in the lead up to this fight. So they should be thanking me as, as well. Um, so, you know. I, I have to say to Look, you, it takes it takes a serious man to come on and, and chat about the feet. You know, it's easy to come on and talk about wins and victories. So we greatly appreciate you coming on today. Um, wish you the fastest and speediest and healthiest recovery. Um, get your feet up, eat some donuts, spoil yourself for a while. Um, and then oh, get I'm going to be a salad dodger for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> anyway. so. And then get the, back um, to the I, want to, I want to congratulate Alex, you know, for the moment. For, you know, at this moment, I want to congratulate Alex for, um, for winning. You know, I, I've spoken with him after it because Eddie's a, you know, we've we've had our, our what you call it, our uh, back and forth. But you know, I respect him. He's, he's, he's at the win. He won. And he's still world world champion. So um, that's not to say that he's not in for a, a terrible time when I come back. But at the moment, let him enjoy his victory. Um, but when I come back, you know, he's in trouble. Well said, me man. Well said, and appreciate it. Thank, uh, enjoy the rest of your evening and rest up. Cheers, Thanks, Cheers. Thanks for having us on. Bye Thanks, man. Bye bye. There you go, the face of Bama, we'll say it. I think he wasn't allowed to be said on the night. Uh, Richard Coyley. Uh, and Rob, a big thing is, it's something we, you know, it's UFC do it with the, what do they call it, the thrill and agony, or right? agony and thrill. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't really, uh, us as media, when we're covering an event, um, or any of the media that are obviously covering an event, yeah. the winner of the of the belt is brought up for an interview. Exactly, yeah. It's sort of not, it's not the, I know I've spoke with a couple of guys after they've lost, um, and that's more so because I know the lads and they yeah, want to yeah, chat yeah. to you. But uh, it does. It takes. It takes a lot. You know, it's easy to come on when you're selling a fight or when you're the winner. But to come on after the feat and to speak so openly and freely, uh, respect to you, Richard Coley, and um, wish you, wish you well and heal up. Um, so that was Bama Thirty Two. We're going to be recapping it later on in the show. So um, let's keep the pace going and let's keep eighty nine on the move. So welcome back to obviously Fight Talk and if you're watching on YouTube you can see him and if you're listening on audio I'm going to tell you we are now joined by John Johnny Jitsu Redmond Johnny uh, we normally have you just getting on not today we have you official lined up for an official interview uh, so thanks a million Johnny for coming on to us this evening No problem at all lads uh, Straight into it Johnny you were involved in the most talked about MMA story worldwide 
Um, but let's not talk about that for the moment. Let's talk about the fight itself. You are seeing this coming in to fighting in Bellator 187 as a huge opportunity, rightly so, on one of the biggest promotions in the world. You were taking on Charlie Ward in Dublin's Tree Arena. First round, Johnny, you were doing well in the first round. How did it just leading into it how did you think the fight was going well I mean the fucking video doesn't lie there but it's, it's like fourth round we came out I won a quick little striking exchange I knew Charlie was going to close the distance in the fight I knew he didn't want that out and open striking fight I was prepared for the type of fight he was bringing <clears throat> took me in took me down to the ground controlled him with me jiu jitsu he got no shots off really got back to my feet and dominated the rest of the round with Greco Rome and absolutely butchered him with the knees he, he, no answers for me boys you know we broke at the end of the round I got clipped with a shot I'm not saying the shot didn't hit me by no means am I getting on here bitching and moaning saying shots didn't hit me or anything like that but by no means was I out referee Mark Goddard said it was going for the second round and then all hell broke loose and that's I just remember from that point just just looking around going what the fuck is going on to be honest Um. Charlie had sort of said in, in post fight he had said he felt you were weak in the clinch that yeah. he, he well that's a complete that's a complete load of garbage from Charlie's mouth to be honest with you Charlie was in there getting butchered and he got away with a win there with the skin of his teeth and I think you can see by the panic that you know I had I had Conor McGregor's fucking bleeding chief of security up against the bleeding rail and kneeling him around for kneeling him around for the whole fight dominating him you know what I mean so you know Charlie can say what the fuck he wants you know what we were quite cordial and this and that, but, you know, we'll go back now and we'll have a fucking second crack. He, he said he'd have a second crack on me, so, you know, <coughs> I hope he honors his fucking word and does. Because um, I think it was, I think the fight warranted. What did, you think, was, what did you think of his comment saying it was better for you not to come out in the second round because you would have just got the d job done in the second round? Yeah, well, you know what I mean? His comments, are, like I said before, you know, their words, the actions in the, in the cage showed that I was in total control. I was beating a man at his own game. A man who was in desperation as far as I'm concerned. You know, he got the shot. Fair fucking play to him, but I definitely think the antics that went on influenced the decision. They just wanted that fight out of that cage. And That's the truth. Let, oh, let's talk about Conor. What, what, what was it, when Conor done what he done, like, what were you thinking, Johnny? As you yeah. were in there, like Conor had a tweet deleted today as well where he basically said, you know, guys on the floor for over a minute, and the referee's trying to tell me the fight's not over. Um, that's when I lost it. Uh, fuck is all. And now he's since deleted that tweet. But what, like, when you, because you were in there, first of all, when Mark Goddard came back over to you, what I seen, it looked like Mark Goddard was saying, telling you to get back to your corner. Yeah, um, I'm telling Charlie, like, when it, when it originally, when, when the fight was originally, when Charlie had walked off and Connor jumped into the ring, Mark Goddard was almost pointing to Charlie as well, saying, go back to your fucking corner. Yeah. John, you go back to your... You know what I mean? So, <clears throat> listen, man. You know, it's, it's it's something definitely that's carrying on from stuff with our time last week. You know, don't get me wrong. Everyone has passion towards their teammates. But, like, I don't think in nowhere in life, like, no matter who the fuck you are, it doesn't excuse your behavior diving into the cage and going on like that. You know what I mean? This is my dream also as well. And, I definitely feel it influenced the decision because, like I said, they, they wanted that cage out, that fight out of the cage as quick as they could when all that shit started happening. I know Andy had an interview and he said that Connor came over to him and said that he respected you and, and Andy as well. Yeah. Did Connor say, yeah. say anything to you or did you speak to Connor during the, the no, melee? I didn't speak to Connor after that. I just, I just, they were just words from Connor out of the, uh, outside the cage toward me. Andy, like, you know what I mean? From him into the cage to us. Yeah. You know, this man. <laughs> You know, I'm just fucking in the cage, like, looking around, going, what the fuck is actually happened? Yeah. Not, not only me, in there, that, I don't think a lot of people have ever seen that. Like, that's fucking carry on. <laughs> I couldn't believe what I was watching. Uh, Johnny, I couldn't believe what I was watching. I, like, I was looking on what, what's happening. And then when I seen, it looked like both yourself and Charlie were sent back to your corner. You were sat down on your stool. Charlie was standing being attended to by a cut man. And it looked like it was going to start again. And then it got waved off. Now, we were talking to uh, officials after. And we were saying if there was, I think it was three minutes, Rob. Is it unified rules? If yeah. there's a longer break than three minutes, the fight will be turned into a no contest. Now, I'm not too sure. Were you aware of the decision when you were called into the centre? Because I know when the ring announcer for Bellator called Charlie as the winner, you sort of shook your head and, and put your hand away. Was that just in disgust that it was defeat, or were you unaware that the decision was Charlie Ward by TKO? All, all, all is the fight's going into a second round, and then 
we were we were told then by the referee that no, sorry, the commission has ruled the con- the ruled the fight the, uh, that that Charlie has won. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So. You know, literally, lads. I was here with my mates, and we, we we filmed the time to the to the thing that happened. Like it's 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 fifty nine point eight eight of a second or something like that. Something mad like that. Like so, you know what I mean? And Mark Goddard like was walking in. Like I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying I didn't get caught with the shot. Like by no means am I doing that. You know, he landed the shot, but I was not out. I was not done, and that definitely. <laughs> That definitely influenced the decision. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Just the Rob was saying, Andy was uh, done an article there, he, an interview with Pete Carroll, and Andy had said that when he got up, he almost turned into an extra security guard, stopping fighters from getting in the cage door. But Andy was saying he didn't see the shot that landed on you, but when he seen you, he thought we're going to stop this fight. It's not going to continue. Um, so for me, that's that's a coach looking after his fighter. Uh, I know you'd be have a very close relationship with Andy. So in a in a way, I don't know if you've seen that interview as of yet on MMA fighting. But what's your thoughts around that aspect of it? Again, do you think that was just sort of lost in the madness of what happened? Listen, man, it was it's just lost in the madness, the complete madness of the fight. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying the shot didn't catch me. Yeah. But by no means was I out. Okay, the shot had rattled me a little bit, but like this is the game we're bleeding in, man. Like let me get into the second round there. Let me get the fucking proper break. Let me get let me get the medical fucking attention for a second, even. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's uh, <laughs> it's something there, that, and it's something that ring home when you said it there. Jesus, it really hit me when you said, you know, you got to remember this is my dream as well. Yeah, like yeah. that's that's powerful. Yeah, and that's the truth, but it is. You know what I mean? Do you feel hard done by? Fucking training and, and and walking at this game a long, long time, and in the last few years, I've really pushed it even further to get to this level, and then like. You know, it's just I pure think, frustration, Johnny. Is it at this stage? Yeah, it's, fru- it's frustration. Yeah, yeah. I really hope Charlie honors his fucking word, and you know what I mean. Backs up all his bullshit. He was saying after the fight, saying I was weak in there. Because to be honest with you, when I had him over in my corner and I was kneeing him around, he was wincing and fucking ouching out of him and everything. So he knows himself. You know. Has anyone from Bellator spoke to you as well, Johnny? Have they have they re- reached out to you? Had contact with you? I haven't spoke to anyone from Bellator. The minute the minute after the fight and all the madness and everything happened and I got checked by the medics, I fucking uh, I just went out, had a couple of drinks, little shit that and, and I went home soon after. I didn't even really watch the, the very end of the fights to be honest. I know in the, the interview with Andy as well, he said that the Bellator officials and the security should have done a better job keeping Connor out. I think we're all in agreement that Connor shouldn't have jumped in. But do you feel that maybe Bellator owe you another chance at fighting Charlie because they couldn't keep control of the people outside the cage? Yeah, but I think like for I think first and foremost, who like, was the boss in there in the fight? It's not as if like where well, Charlie dominated me for the whole yeah. fucking fight. Like, you know, come on, like, g- give me that opportunity. Let me get in there and uh, let's. That's that's what I want. Like, let's take it back to the bleeding fight in here. What it really is yeah. about. Yeah. Like, about something totally fucking different. Let's take it back to the real reason why we're in there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just. Uh, it's very frustrating, lads. Well, I have to, I have to say, Johnny, because when I, when I, you know, we always break down fights and whatever, and we we're talking about it. But like what you said, you knew he was going to close the distance, and that's what I was saying. Is like when, because I came out after um, doing an interview, um, yeah, and, and it, it came down to me when I was sitting at the, yeah, the stands. So yeah, I came out and I, 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 the fight had just started, and I was like, "How's the fight going?" And at this stage, is we're now in the clinch up against the cage, and I was there going right. So the fight is where Charlie wants it. But like you said, I thought you used beautiful to turn Charlie in, and a couple of yeah. times Charlie tried to turn you back, and you weren't allowing it. You were landing nice strikes in there. What cut him though, Johnny? I missed what cut him. He's a big gash across the forehead. What was it? Well, I was cutting him with a short elbow on the inside, so I had the underhook on one side, and I kept playing, playing the left arm and cutting him with the elbow. So the elbow had sliced him. I think he had a cut under his eye and a cut across his forehead as well from it. So them elbows were really walking in the clinch there. You know, McCorner was very happy with that during the fight, you know, so. And how how are you now, Johnny? A couple of days out from the fight. Uh, you, know, you know, were you ready to get back in there again? When are you looking at if, if Bellator are asking? Fucking going now, boys. That's, you know what I mean? That's how ready I am, mm. you know? And is that something that I know... Um, like it, 
I don't know with with, with the Bellator at, when you signed was it one and done was it the, the one fight and let, let's talk after that or do you have a couple of fights signed with them? Oh, it was just a one fight as far as I know so far, but you know. Well, it, 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 it'd be nice. I think it definitely warrants. I think it definitely warrants another fight. Why wouldn't so. it want to be a fight that Bellator want to put on? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Like just it, not then. not just because it was a close it was a close fight, it shouldn't have ended then. But the storyline is there. It's a big fight for Bellator now. Fucking sure it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. I told you before in, in, in so last year, like, once I'm at this level, I mean, there you go. You know what I mean? There's the proof from the pudding. Mm-hmm. Conor McGregor's leading security man is getting bleeding butchered in a cage for the whole round and then to get away with catching me a, a dig at the end of the round and then all hell breaks loose and it changes decisions. Like, let's face it, that's what happened. Do you know what I mean? I was told it was going into a second round and then the decision was changed because of the fucking... They were afraid a riot was going to kick off in the whole fucking building. Do you know what I mean? It's the it's the madness. one side of the story. Like it was mad. It's, what happened was madness. So I've yeah. never seen that. No, Jesus, I'm going to MMA shows and covering MMA, be it as an MC or whatever. I've never seen nothing like it. Was absolutely mental, and that happened on such a big promotion. Um, as your coach Andy Ryan said, Bellator have to look at themselves. Their cage side security, um, all that. It, it has to be because, like, if I done that, let's say your your if I done that, I'd, I'd be. I had Charlie against the fence shouting instructions right up near the cage you know being allowed to run around and do what he wants so like where's the fucking can't do that man i don't think that'd be even tolerated on a fucking little irish show and a little hall man you know what i mean that's you know i think johnny you're talking to you here and we're a few days out man i think it's just still pure frustration yeah. and you, you feel like you're being robbed of the fight that you were in Um hopefully bellator see sense here and, and it be it if, it, if yeah. it's not even Charlie if it's somebody else I hope they see sense and they give Johnny Jiu Jitsu again is Char- I hope Charlie honours his word and stops fucking shite now and just takes the fight again and we'll go again and it'll be the fucking continuation on like you know let's finish the fuck fight properly and Charlie going oh he's going to come around in the second round and knock his head off anyway and this and that like the pure horse talk you know Johnny, I, I hope you get it. I hope uh, yeah. and Bellator they have to get the car. It, yeah, it makes it makes sense. Makes sense. It's it's um, it was a great fight while it was lasted, and I, I think the people of the three arena as well were robbed of it um, in some ways, especially with the madness that pursued it. You know, we didn't get if nobody knew what was going on, yeah. um, and I think we deserve to see it. And I, I, I think you, I think you displayed yourself again as a mixed martial arts uh, mixed martial artist very well as well. You've presented yourself very well as no one else would expect. You're an absolute. Uh, personality in Irish MMA you're one of the pioneers of Irish MMA as well and I think you should have been shown a lot more respect than you were as well so um, hopefully Johnny the fight gets made and um, cause, you know we, we'd love to see you get the opportunity again as you deserve you know yeah definitely lads Listen, Johnny. Let's, let, let, let's you know like I mean come on it's the only fight to fucking make isn't it yeah. you know what I mean let's sense. go let's do it again yeah, it makes sense yeah. It makes sense. It Listen, makes we sense. hope you get it. Johnny, thanks for coming on to us. And uh, rest up, me man. I'm going to talk soon, yeah? Cheers, boys. Thanks, Cheers, Johnny. Who the fuck? There you go. Who's the fuck at at the end? You can tell there, can't you, that Johnny's yeah. just, he's, he's purely frustrated and it's, it's understandable. Yeah, you can see you can see where he's coming from. Like, if he's, and I think he's honest, Rob. He's saying, yeah, yeah, I got hit, I got hit, I got rocked. Yeah, you got rocked. But, from what he's saying, he was told it's going to another round. He was expecting yeah. it. And again, like people can look at the video and say, oh, look, he was still on the ground. But to be fair to Johnny, that happens so much where a fighter's still on the ground and they'll get helped up or they'll yeah. get up on their feet, they'll yeah. go onto the stool. The and then as he said, the yeah, and, and they'll get medical attention. He wasn't given that opportunity. He was still on the ground because yeah. Mark Goddard was pushed. Him, yeah. yeah, exactly. So yeah. who knows? If that didn't happen, maybe Johnny would have got back to his feet straight away. That line killed me though, you know, where he said, yeah. my dream as well. Yeah, when you, when you think about it like that, yeah. like you don't really think about it like that. Like Johnny's been working in this game for a long time yeah. and he finally got that big opportunity on Bellator and, you know, in a way it was snatched away from him. The second round was snatched away from him. He was told he was going to a second round. He had a good first round. I think he was. I think he's truthful when he says he was beating Charlie in the clinch. I think he was. When yeah, you, when you well, co- I was scoring. I would have yeah, scored the round. Yeah, when you come out to me and you said, how's Johnny doing? Or how's, how's the fight going? I said, Johnny's winning in the clinch. He's, you yeah. know, he looks bigger. He looks stronger. Um, so yeah I'd love to see it again I think it makes perfect sense but like like Johnny like I said Johnny is he's quite a, he got hit like was it like the shot landed by yeah. Charlie Ward was a 
beautiful it was a good shot. shot yeah it was and a good shot here, and it hurt it, it would put a lot of guys out yeah yeah it was um, yeah. in fairness it was a great fight um, and I think as well if, you, if you're shot. Jesus the crap but Johnny is not like Johnny is known for being an absolute warrior in there as well he can take a shot to land a shot yeah and like the mass confusion of it never helps when there's confusion like that but I have to say you know it was a the big shot landed I said it to Charlie so like it was a great finish like yeah. it, it's a great victory for Charlie as well to get in there to get that win to get back in the winner circle that was a big fight a for big, Charlie yeah. Ward that was a big fight for Charlie Ward hence his big celebration exactly, how happy yeah. he was from it coming off two um, fights yeah. but at the same time you know it's, yes. it's very different if if the buzz and whatever happened and all that if if everything that didn't happen happened would it be the same outcome? Would the fight have ended? Yeah, you, you never know. We don't know. You don't know. You never know. So run it back. Run it back. Just do it again. Like Charlie said, he'd take it. Um, and Charlie him, said he'd do it. Johnny wants to do it. Bellator do it. And for Charlie as well. Like if, like I'm sure he's going in there believing he can beat Johnny. I'm sure he is. Yeah. So if he can win there and he he gets another fight under his belt and a win under his belt, that's good for him as well. So. Yeah. I think do but it. A, a it's big, a, it's a, a big, big shout out to Johnny coming on again. Like Johnny, yeah, Johnny's been on this show. We obviously, yeah. we 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 always do just getting on with Johnny yeah. Jitsu. Johnny's an absolute character. And like I said in the interview, he is a pioneer of the sport. Johnny done a lot of his learning at professional. You know, we didn't really, yeah, have, yeah. you know, that's and and like, you know, it's it, it was a weird one. Like I think it's so weird because it, it's we've never co- like we cover where this podcast is nearly two years old. We spoke about MMA so much. We've never seen this. I'm watching MMA. Like, yeah, it'll almost madness. bring you back to uh, Miller and Diaz brothers and that, yeah. that happened that... Uh, the scuffle in the cage. Yeah, yeah, it, it, was, would, yeah. it was like that. It was, it was These mental. things happen in MMA. Like, there's no... There's no precedent. There's no rule. But like, There is rules and they were all yeah. broke. But when this happens, <laughs> there's no... What do, this yeah, you do what this do you do, and you yeah, do yeah, this. Exactly, it was, it yeah. was insane. It's insane. And you got to feel like for both and Charlie Ward, like as in and, what, and Mark Goddard, yeah. like, he's in a bad position Jesus, there as well. Man, it's just Jesus. fucking mad. Yeah, it was mad. mad. It's mad. So a few more other mad things happened this week, but we're gonna go deep and talk a little bit more and get the opinion from across the pond. We're gonna get MMA fighting and the ringer journalist, uh, great guy, great opinions, great articles on MMA fighting as always. Phenomenal articles. Um, We're delighted now. We're gonna move on and talk with Chuck uh, Minahal. So uh, welcome back. Welcome back. Obviously, fight talk. Chuck Minahal. So welcome back to Obviously Fight Talk. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see. And if you're listening on audio, sure, I'm going to tell you. We are now joined by MMA Fighting and The Ringer. We're going to be doing the big stories in MMA this week with Chuck Minnell So Chuck, thanks again for coming on to Obviously Fight Talk, my man. Oh, thanks for having me, fellas. Always fun. Cheers. Uh, Chuck, there's no prizes for guessing what we're going to be talking about. First here, the big news with Conor McGregor, where he jumps the cage at Bellator 187. Uh, to set the scene briefly, his teammate Charlie Ward was fighting against John Redmond. Um, in a competitive first round fight, and with a second to go on the clock, Charlie Ward landed a big left, I think it was a left hook, yes. um, that put John Redmond down. Landed a couple of shots on the ground as well, and Mark Goddard stepped in. The confusion arose because up over the cage came Conor McGregor jumping into the arms of Charlie Ward, who landed a solid takedown, it must be said. Um, and then Mark Goddard tried to separate to sort of say the fight's not over. And then all confusion broke out in the madness. So let's let's talk about that. So me and Robert, we were covering it, Chuck. We were there. We were live in the three arena. And then I just said to Robert, this wasn't live in the States. Yeah. It wasn't televised. It wasn't... So how did this news come about to you? How did this land on your doorstep? And were you like, what the... F-? Well, you know, man, this is one of those weird ones because um, at MMA Fighting, we have like a, um, a group email that we all kind of, you know, hop on and, and communicate through. And somebody had posted the footage just at a... But it was pretty bad angle. So you couldn't really understand what was going on. I think a lot of us assumed at the time that, uh, you know, that Charlie had lost... Yeah. And that there was some kind of something that happened in the aftermath of that. So it wasn't really clear. But very shortly thereafter, somebody came through with a, um, a different angle where you could actually see what was going on. And then it was only and then it became more puzzling because you're like, OK, wait a second. So he's celebrating. He's celebrating with uh, his guy. And then uh, and then he's getting into a fracas with uh, the referee. You know, so it was like one of those uh, bewildering moments where you're trying to put together exactly what happened. But. 
you know, with the sense of like, oh, what did Conor McGregor do this time? Because honestly, like, yeah. you know, when you see that he's in there and um, the, the, the pot is stirring because of him, there's always like this extra allure of like how, you know, you're thinking of in, in, in this phase of like, um, what does this all mean? What does this all mean? So um, it was one of those slow, weird things that kind of developed. And as as the details come in and you're able to process it, obviously, it's like, OK, I think I got a grasp as to what happened. Uh, but it did look kind of surreal from our end. I mean, it was just kind of piecing it together as it came through. What's the general feeling amongst, say, the journalists in the States at the moment? Because it's probably a little bit different than um, the journalists in Ireland. So what's the general opinion of, of what happened from what you can take well, from it? I, yeah, my sense of it is that um, I, I kind of get a sense that a lot of people thought he kind of he maybe crossed the line a little bit there, obviously, um, you know, jumping that fence and um, – you know, I, I saw a lot of people basically defending Mark, Mark Goddard, the referee, and saying, like, you know, he was within his rights to protect that cage. That's, a, you know, he's the third man in there. That's basically part of his job is to, you know, keep the order in that situation. Um, but I have seen, you know, I've seen a few people kind of arguing the other way, too, thinking that there might have been some blame Um the way Goddard handled it, the way, uh, you know, other people handled it. Certainly it raises a lot of issues as to, you guys have been to UFC shows, yeah, right? So a lot of times when you're going to, like, as a press member, you have to go through some security. There's security guys all kind of around there, and there are UFC handlers who are kind of circulating the, the actual octagon who are making sure that um, people, just random people walking around are seated, that if anybody's obstructing views, that they're seated, that the photographers are ducked down. It's very, very orderly. Um, Bellator has always been a little bit different with the way they've handled it. Um, there's, there's a lot more obstruction. I don't think they're overly concerned, uh, especially with a guy like Conor McGregor who's kind of maybe circulating around the cage and, and because we, you know, we know what kind of guy Conor is. I think that everybody kind of, he just adds a dimension to a fight, even if he's not into it. Um, so there was just a lot of, it's just a lot of weirdness. You're like, where was the security? Where was, um, where were the Bellator officials? I know that they, I know he kind of slapped at one of them later on and things like that, but it just – you wonder how it gets to this point, um, how much – of course, Connor has a sense of privilege right now, obviously, for where he's at. Um, but that it's it's odd to me to see events like that because you think, like, people share in that. They, they let him kind of get to a certain extent just to see what's going to happen. And um, that's kind of the way I looked at it. Like, you're, you're watching a guy um, – you know, and, and out here, I think that a lot of people in the States are seeing it kind of like that. I think that you know, I saw Dave Doyle, um, my, my colleague Dave Doyle, say something on Twitter along the lines of, this is like one of the behind the musics when you say like, you know, we really should have noticed the first red flag at that show in <laughs> Ireland, you know, like uh, when he did this. And you start to re recollect yeah. as to those, those things um, as if that's the beginning of the spiral type thing. Mm -hmm. We'll see if that's really the case. But it certainly has that kind of feel to it, the out of control nature of it. And um it also speaks to the, where we're at in terms of our Conor McGregor um, fandom in general, that these things are just blow up to this extent and that he's able to even be around that cage and able to jump in and able to kind of have this kind of stuff. I mean, um, it'll speak to the times and it might also speak at some point to his overall, like if he starts to fall at some point, we might look back at this as, a, as one of those catalysts. Who knows? Like, I, I think that the problem with it was at the time, and according to, like, I know Mark Goddard spoke uh, briefly about it as well, and there's a couple of different statements. Andy Ryan was, of course, talking to your, your colleague, P.T. Carroll, along with John Redmond about it. And Andy, like what you said, sort of alluded to, you know, Bellator, in a way, they sort of have themselves to blame. They didn't have security. They were sort of letting Connor roam where he wanted to. Um, and I, essentially, if for people who don't know, you had media row, you had a yeah. barrier, and then you had Connor and a lot of the other teammates just in at the cage like pretty much yeah. at the cage so there's um, no no barrier like so when it happened I think the problem with it was I don't well, think well Bellator even, even and Bellator even teased it out like hey yeah. tune in and we'll, <laughs> you can check out the, I mean that's oh. that tells you kind of how they were looking at well, it you I, know I, what I, mean? I, I can say every Bellator representative I've seen after this had a big smile on their face walking yeah. around I can, I can certainly <laughs> say I'm sure that. they did yeah. um, but yeah, like that was a heck of a Bellator debut for, for Connor too, man. <laughs> yeah. Mike Goldberg's tweet was the best. Yeah. I got to was, I got to announce Connor's debut yeah. in Bellator. But like <laughs> I, I think the issue came around though, Chuck, where it came was confusion. Everything everything seemed to get confused by what happened. Um Goddard looked like he called a fight off, but again, the commission were saying that basically they wanted to know was this shot 
that landed to put Johnny Redmond down. Was this inside the round or had the buzzer gone? So we were waiting to see. And at one stage you can see as Mark Goddard was walking back from his quick uh, telling Connor to get out, you can tell him you can see him point to John Redmond to say, get to your corner. Yeah. So at that point it looked like we were resetting and getting ready for round two. And that seemed to make the matter worse because as Conor McGregor was walking back out of the cage, he sort of addressed the crowd by putting his hands up. Obviously being in Dublin, a huge roar went up. But then you could hear him shouting, that was a, a stoppage, that was a stoppage, and he entered the cage again. Um, this time it was a little bit more security stopping him. I don't think he fully got in. Um, and then he proceeded to run around the cage and then climbed the fence, and you could see one of the staffers, I, I'm not sure if he was a commissioner or a staffer, official, was pushing Connor's leg back over, and Connor lashed out with a left. It was more of a slap than anything. Yeah. But this is where it got to the stage where this behavior is not acceptable. Um, right. And like... <sighs> The, th- the thing about it is, is this the Bellator 188, uh, 187 card? It was regulated um, by the Mohican Tribe uh, Department right. of Athletic Regulation, um, and their president had spoke about it, saying basically, yeah, that Connor jeopardized the safety of John Redmond with what happened, and it was just un- unacceptable behavior. End of statement. Yeah. So it looks like he sort of got away with this. So from Connor's yeah. perspective, why can't he do it if he's going to get away with it? Yeah. I mean. It looks like he's going to get away with it. That was the big, uh, you know, that was the big thing that was coming out of this. Obviously, we remember the Jason High incident, yeah. and um, there's been there's been some incidents like this where somebody uh, makes contact with a referee, and we've seen it in other sports certainly. And you know, there's pretty severe depending on where they're at um, in their careers or who they are. There, it, it fluctuates, but obviously, like a guy like Jason High, they just cut him and they yeah. say you can't do this. Well, this is Conor McGregor, and you know that's not going to happen. Um, I guess the UFC, I mean, they have a code of conduct. I don't know to what extent they carry this, these things out. I don't really believe they're going to suspend him or anything along those lines in terms of in-house unless it was to serve some reason to, that they wanted to put a fight together that it would somehow make sense to their big picture to say, like, we can suspend, and and that's the reason for this. Um, you could see a scenario maybe in that sense, but honestly, you're taking money out of your own pocket to suspend him at any, at any length. It just seems like to me... It's one of those things, you know, like um, the escalation of a rock star in some ways. Uh, right. You know, they, you, they, get a, they get a reputation as kind of, um, you know, being firebrands, very charismatic. Uh, their stage performance can become a little bit more uh, crazier as they go along. The sense of invincibility starts to take over a little bit more as they go along. And then you start to see them do things that you're like, okay, they're clearly demonstrating now that they don't believe rules, the common rules and common laws that we all are governed by apply to them, that they're bigger than – for instance, this situation um, bigger than the game. What kind of bothered me more, honestly, like I'm, I'm a little bit of a, I don't mind some chaos in the fight game. I'm, I, I hate the, I hate sanitizing it yeah. too much. You know, the, the, some of the fun elements are that it does get a little wild. It pushes, you know, pushes it into strange boundaries within reason. And certainly, Conor McGregor is very good at this. You know, like he's one of those guys. Um, but it kind of bothers me because, you know, presumably he's jumping in there to celebrate with his teammate. And, okay, that's fine, but he's actually detracting from the teammate, yeah. taking away yeah. from that. I mean, imagine if they, they if they came back and they said, hey, the fight was going to the next round and now it's a no contest mm-hmm. or something like that. Not only did he just jump in there and jeopardize, uh, you know, what was his, uh, uh, John Redman, you know, and all that stuff. But at the same time, then he would be affecting his own teammate's record in that sense. So there's a lot of stuff like that that I'm like, I feel like it's – you know, it's just such a um, uh, compulsive or, uh, you know, just him jumping in so spontaneously and like that. It's so like he needs to check himself just a little bit. You know, he rein it in a little bit because that type of behavior, honestly, if you accrue it over time, you may be forgiven once or twice. But as as things like this continue to happen, it, it, the, the public won't be as uh, merciful as we go forward as well. I think the your point of the sense of, of invincibility makes sense as well because if you look at Connor's career so far, like the, the first two weight world champion at the same time, possibly going to be the first guy to co promote the UFC. That's that's a possibility. Yeah. So it's only human nature for guys to get that sense of invincibility. But what do you think would be a sensible punishment for Connor? For me, I think a suspension of six to six months to a year yeah. makes sense. But I don't think it's going to happen. What do you think is a sensible yeah. uh, punishment? I don't know, man. It's such a strange, like every single thing we deal with, I feel, I feel like every time I dissect the Conor McGregor uh, fight or, you know, his predictions or anything that we're dealing with Conor McGregor, it's all sort of unprecedented because no, nobody yeah. within the UFC has meant as much 
and especially within a new era of the new ownership and everything else. So you're just not sure um, what would be appropriate in this yeah. in this situation. Um, he's already had the incident the incident where uh, you know he was throw, he was flinging the bottles at Nate Diaz and everything like yeah. that, and you know we saw kind of how that played out. It was ultimately just a slap on the wrist. At some point, you know, they're going to have to they're going to have to level some kind of uh, something that will actually send a message to him. And maybe I don't know. I mean, he just came off of this really ridiculous payday. I don't know how much a fine. I don't know how much you have to fine him. I don't even know, like, what would what affect him on that level. We know he likes his money, but um, maybe they what what are they going to do? I don't know how much you can actually fine him for that. A suspension might be the the way to speak to him, but again, I feel like this is a weird this is a weird one because I feel like then this thing could get skewed as to why he's not fighting so and so and so and so. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it could yeah, get yeah. it could just open up a can of worms <laughs> that then changes so much else and makes it a dark look for the UFC. So it'd be interesting to see what they end up doing. But honestly, man, I'm glad I'm not I'm glad I'm not the one who has to figure this thing out. You know what I mean? <laughs> my, my, yeah. I, when I was sitting watching it, we were, I couldn't believe it when it was happening in front of us. I was like, going, <laughs> is this happening? I wish I was there. I would have been. I, oh, that would have been to get the full context of what was going on. It would have been better to be there rather yeah. than get it piecemeal like I was getting it. You it know was, what I mean? It, it was like um, for me, it's you know the whole you're looking at a car crash, but you just can't take your eyes <laughs> off it, even though you don't want to watch it. That's what for me. Yeah, I was looking at Am I watching this? But for me, where it really honed home for me was the next day when you know the videos were out and there was great photography taken of it. Where is and like. To hone it in, as much as we're talking about it's bad for the UFC and stuff like that, MMA here in Ireland, Chuck, is very, you know, we've been building it. Um, yeah. And there's a lot yeah. of great work, including um, Connor's head coach, John Kavner, uh, Andy Ryan, who it was his fighter, uh, John Redmond fighting. But there's a lot of great people building the reputation of MMA here in Ireland. And we're really pushing to get the sports seen and recognized as legitimate. And uh, just to be recognized by the government and a yeah. government body here and to be, you know, seen yeah. as a, a real sport. So the man who has done the most for MMA, you could argue worldwide, but also the man who has, like, like, literally set Ireland on fire for mixed martial arts, it was like a house of cards. You could just see yeah. that crumbling. And for me, the one thing I thought looking at these pictures was this was not a good look for Irish MMA. And that's what, for me, hit me the hardest yeah. with it. Um, yep. A lot of people have sort of talked about, you know, this man is a role model, you know, to his kids at this event. I'm not too sure, like, as in, I, I, I fell for that a little bit. We were talking to young guys going in. It was, yeah. a, it was a young kid on his birthday was going in, and he was telling us how big a Conor McGregor fan he is and stuff. Yes, fighters are fighters, so they, they become role models, but they don't necessarily start off as role models. They are a fighter at the end of the day. It is a hard game where you have to be, a you know, the alpha male. So that argument is a little... But my thing was Irish MMA has worked so hard and the biggest superstar in it yeah. really blackened its eye yeah. on Friday night. And that's what I took from it and was a little disappointed in it. And I think something has to be done, you know, just calm down man and do what you're doing yeah, relax, like let, yeah. let, you know you're a born entertainer you know you're the, the modern day muhammad ali and in, in mma yep. what you do and stick to that you know it doesn't need to be controversy and it's just i don't know if it was just i can appreciate what was happening with is a look like charlie ward is a good friend of conor mcgregor not just a teammate yep. he's also i believe works as a bodyguard for conor so they're two very close gentlemen so i think his, his sentiment of celebration was a good original sentiment yeah, it just went and far. then it right. just went crazy yeah i mean we would we wouldn't have even been worried ultimately i think there would have been a little bit of discussion about him jumping in the cage uh yeah. given the timing yeah. and how aggressive he kind of jumped in there and did that but let's just say that it, that's where it ended there was you know guard said like, get out he's kind of like oh sorry guys i was just lost my mind a minute and he got back out i don't really think yeah. you would just be talking about how exuberant he is for his uh, his teammates and ultimately um there may still be some discussion about is that appropriate but yeah it comes down to, uh, you know, almost an obnoxiousness at this point because when it gets, you know, we, we were, we just went through this whole, whole ordeal with the, uh, you know, the Mayweather fight and there was a, a lot of scrutiny on this fight, a lot that was, uh, you know, that skews into the funhouse aspect of fighting, which I, which I didn't really like, but it was, um, it, it certainly opened your mind to a lot of different things in terms of boxers, uh, in, in the boxing realm, meeting with the MMA realm. It was fun. Yeah. And I, I keep yeah. seeing him as this guy who's pushing things into new, just kind of broadening everything, broadening the UFC, broadening his own brand, if you want to call it, broadening, um, 
you know, how we look at fighters, how the casual world looks at fighters. He's, he's one of those guys who actually makes you do that. So I agree with you 100 percent, man, not just from an Irish standpoint of what he's been able to do for the country and, and mixed martial arts in that country and to take it to those. But just all over. I mean, yeah. this is a guy who at this point um, has, you know, every tweet he does is just it just blows up and goes viral. You know what I mean? It's like he has the that kind of that, the, you know, those kind of eyes that can balloon the other way and go um, and turn negative very fast and turn a lot of people off very fast if these kinds of shenanigans go on. Um, and honestly, man, as a guy who covers the sport, you don't want to see it. You don't want to see him. Yeah. You don't want to see him spiral out of control, where we're talking about him in, in some weird way anytime soon. Because honestly, man, the guy, there's so much more that he can offer the sport than that. You know what I mean? Speaking of tweets, Speaking of- he did tweet today. Um, yeah. As the, we seen, uh, the tweet I seen was this tweet uh, barely stayed up longer than Jose Aldo at UFC 94. <laughs> but the tweet was bloke KO'd on the floor. About a minute straight, and ref trying to say fight's not over, Connor. That's when I lost it. Fuck you all. And then deleted it. It was deleted. <laughs> so that was right. That was the and tweet was today. It was up for about a minute this morning. Um, There's some John Jones in it. Yeah, huh? <laughs> no remorse. Delete. No remorse. Um, so again, it, it's something I'm. I'm sure it's not going to be the last we hear about this. Yeah. Um, Let's see what happens. I just think it was a bad look for MMA in general. I, I, and I don't want to open any can of worms, but you hope that that kind of erratic behavior is just exuberance and not so. something else, man. That's yeah. what I hear. All little whispers are like, I hope he's not, you know, over partying and getting a little bit too crazy within his own personal life. You know what I'm saying? Because you see that kind of behavior, it certainly raises red flags. Absolutely. And um, I think it's going to be, it's going to be. I think people are starting to watch him in different ways now. So I just, I hope he, uh, like I said, man, I hope he starts to check himself just a little bit in those situations. Well, what, what I found about it, I, I fully agree with you. What I found about it is a lot of my people that I know who aren't mixed martial arts fans actually were messaging me to say, "Oh, what about your boy now? Are you not talking about him yeah. now?" So it's almost like people are waiting for the great, and it's that's in every country we'll you know when somebody falls there'll always be someone to kick you when you're there but i think people as you said people are sort of looking at that going on oh, scrutinizing here's your boy yeah starting to go but let's are, is, is the irish media coming down on him pretty hard or are they seeing it more on his side no, no, I, no, I, no I i have to say I, I felt um like we were there with the likes of the irish uh, journalists uh, mma journalists that were covering it the likes of severe talking brawls and pt, was there. PT carroll yeah. was there everybody mm-hmm. was unified that this was unacceptable and yeah. the line was crossed good yeah. i mean that's 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 the general sense over here so i mean it, it just sounds like we're everybody's got a pretty balanced idea of what yeah. they're looking at here yeah yeah um, and yeah. let's move let's on to the Conor next McGregor. piece let's get off Conor McGregor <laughs> um, and let's move to uh, Jesus we've got disappointing news coming we were spoiled with UFC 217 the, the, the gods aligned and, and we thought yep this is magic but uh, Anderson Silva fails another drug test and um, Michael Bisbing has stepped in to fight Kelvin Gastelum in Shanghai but before we address Michael Bisbing Anderson Silva what's your thoughts when you when you've seen this news Chuck my, my thought was, man, at 40, so first of all, at 42 years old, Anderson Silva clearly in his twilight. And to be completely honest, I'd rather he wasn't fighting any anyway. But just to get your – to go through a legacy <laughs> through so many years where you're considered the best guy pound for pound and uh, in, in mixed martial arts history and to have this kind of end – just that's the first my first thought was like man again you know since he just went through this whole usada thing uh from that from the nick diaz fight yeah so that was my first thing was just i was i was thinking of his overall legacy right off the bat and then and then it was just kind of um par for the course because like you guys just mentioned we came off that great i actually just wrote a column about this we come off this great weekend i feel like this is always the the tax we pay for having (laughs) a very big weekend you know madison square garden and this like the, the week just kind of blows up, you know, <laughs> and it's just was like one more piece of news that was like, oh, my God, what else can possibly happen? And given the Dominic Cruz, the couple of fights that were really good, Dominic Cruz falling out of his fight yeah. again, you know, um, coming up in that one. And then uh, what was the other one? Somebody else. Uh, Edgar. 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 Jose Aldo, that whole. Boy. So to me, it was just like it was it was kind of retribution from the from the MMA gods once again smiting us with uh, getting too happy about our sport. But honestly, man, like in, in all seriousness, 
just a sad ending to Anderson, uh, Anderson Silva's career. I mean, you already had to put an asterisk a little bit on his career because you weren't sure how far some of, you know, obviously these guys who fought in Pride and fought in Japan and then early UFC, you never knew to what extent they're doing it. And this certainly is not the look he wants because I think now this is asterisk, asterisk turns to bold. You know what I mean? Now we have to really look at how much this tarnishes his legacy. What what stands out with the comments you said there about lads coming off the Pride and not doing well, Phil Baroni was talking with Ariel, actually, um, and he yeah. turned around and he said, the problem oh, yeah, wasn't the guys were coming off the juice in coming from Pride. The problem was the guys in the UFC were on better juice than the guys coming <laughs> off the juice in Pride. I believe that, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, I believe that. Yeah. But, you know, for me, like... I, I went I, I was weird with Anderson I flip flopped with Anderson I loved him I remember watching Anderson Silva fight on the UK circuit and then yeah, when he signed yeah. for the UFC he then like is when he beat like I was a big Rich Franklin fan so when he beat Rich yeah. Franklin he was the enemy to me and you know? I was cheering for Franklin <laughs> and then when he went on his run I was like oh my god this guy is incredible but then he started clowning and I was then wanting to see him get beat because he was so good so I flip flopped a couple of times with yeah. um, Anderson Silva but it really does a throw yeah. shade over his whole career. And that's a sad, sad ending. Um, yeah, you'd wonder what his legacy will look like now because it's sometimes unfortunate when guys get popped that you look back, oh, how long has he been taking? It's unfortunate, but it's always going to be that way. Once you get caught, yeah. everyone's going to think that way. So how do you think it's going to affect his legacy? Do you think people are not going to really talk about him as the best of all time anymore? Mm. You know what's really crazy about it is just the timing, like we we're just talking about. Because GSP comes back yeah, after yeah. four years, yeah. wins the wins a middleweight title, and then we, you go through this scenario of it kind of revs up in a real way the pound for pound conversation again, which yeah. is not the greatest conversation because it's very um, subjective and everything else. But I think that most people would say like. You know, John Jones, huge asterisk all over his name now, but he's still there, as, depending sort of, too, on what happens with him in the next little bit of time here, what happens in his uh, his latest incident. But you had GSP kind of shooting back up now under a different context of winning that title. So he's there, and you had Anderson Silva. And it's just – it's such a complicated thing now to actually discuss because I, I feel like to have proper context, you have to then drag, you know – Whoever you're talking to, you have to go through the mud with them, and it's yeah. just not a pleasant conversation to have. But I think that um, Anderson Silva, this, I would, I would like to say that we would look back on his career and just be like, wow, man, there was just not. He was, it was he was the greatest for his time, and um, you know, maybe in the late part. He started trying to um, make himself younger and was doing yeah, some yeah. stuff to, to you know, do this stuff. But I honestly believe. The way this fight game moves and how it, uh, and just the the just the way it goes, I, I don't know if we're going to look at him like that. I think it's going to hurt him in the end because it'll be the last look, first of all, and I think it really does cast a shadow backwards over his over his career, and that's the that's the unfortunate thing, man. Because during like I'm with you, man. Like I, I watched. Him. It was he was a little bit polarizing at times. Uh, there were some fights where you did want to see him get beat just because he was clowning on guys, and um, there was times where he'd drive me crazy when they would talk to him about fighting his clone and yeah. kind of not ducking guys, but he would you know not giving the time of day to certain challengers, things like that. But ultimately, when he was in there, I mean, like that Forrest Griffin fight will be, remain one of my favorites yeah. of all time, just the way he bewitched him in there and with his movement and everything like that. But I think that it will. This will shroud the whole thing ultimately. Just depending on what it is, I don't want to falsely like. Yeah, obviously, it doesn't yeah, look course. good at this moment. But if if this stands and this is the last we hear of, of Anderson Silva, that's not I, that's not going to reflect well on his career. What about? Because I know we we're going to jump in. What about yeah. Biz being taken this three yeah, weeks after? Say, yeah. Yeah, after losing the title. Like, <laughs> a after as well, when you think about it, he spoke about possibly retiring after yeah. GSP. And then he said, oh, maybe I won't retire. I want to fight again in England. And he takes a fight in sh Shanghai. Shanghai, what's <laughs> but my, crazy? My is, like, Bisping he didn't want to fight, uh, he didn't want to fight Whitaker because he didn't want to go back to yeah, Australia. Yeah. He didn't want to take the big <laughs> yeah. trip and all this. I mean, out of all the names they pulled out of the hat, yeah. <laughs> or they could have pulled out of the hat, I wouldn't have foreseen no. that coming. Um, what do you think, though, from, from a it, medical yeah. point standpoint, like as in... yeah. The fact he got choked out and took some heavy right. shots against GSP, like he got dropped against GSP. Yeah. So here we are coming in against Kelvin Gastelum. Like from that standpoint, I think it's 
maybe a little poor on the promotions end that they're no. I'm not he obviously has to get cleared yep. but yeah. he always, you know how it is man they always kind of um, they always kind of deflect responsibility to well it's a three month suspension or a doctor saying it's okay yeah, he's yeah, cleared yeah. by a doctor and I guess this is one of those things they're calling in well the doctor said he's okay so we're gonna <laughs> like you know and it, to me I'm like man it's not just that he got rocked in that fight right or choked out and he was bleeding and you just see this happening before your eyes and it just happened literally just yeah. happened yeah it's also just the cumulative toll we've seen on this guy. I mean, like he has taken some punishment. Um, I, honestly, I, 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 there was not. Uh, he's he's unparalleled in terms of heart and chin, as far as I'm concerned, for a legacy uh, for the amount of wins he has because he's the winningest guy, right? You know, tied now with GSP, but the winningest fighter out there, and all this stuff. But he's taking so much, taking so much punishment, and to go on against. Gaslam on short nose and Gaslam proving him to be, you know, he's like an he's like an oak tree, man, at this <laughs> at this weight still. And I feel like uh, just w- watching what he did with uh, I'm talking about Gaslam, watching what he did with like Tim Kennedy and things like that. It just seems very like, ooh, uh, I don't know about that. You can't question the you can't question Bisping's heart or want or his willingness or, you know, just being a company guy and like that. But, man, I'm not sure I want to see it, to be honest with you. But um it, to me, it's just because I had never thought of it, and just given all the all that context I just filled in, I'm not sure I I loved it. Mm. But at the same time, you can't help but admire him for for wanting to do it. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. to me, that guy like he's he deserves kudos every time he does something like this. You're like, Unbelievable. you know, that's that's Michael Bisping. I think Michael Bis- <laughs> I think that Bisping. I don't think he was too happy with his performance against GSP. No, in some he way. said he wanted to go back. Yeah, in he wanted to get. So you can understand it from that perspective, but it's just surprised. It's I, not I genuinely, a favorable matchup anyway. When, when I seen the tweet with the poster, I just thought somebody, you know, <laughs> yeah. used Photoshop, and I'm like, yeah, get out of here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, crazy, crazy fight. Uh, briefly, we touch on a couple of fights quickly. What do you think of the Holloway and Jose Aldo getting Aldo getting the rematch again? This is another fight I saw. I went, hmm. weird, yeah, yeah. So this is one of those ones where Frankie Edgar, so he, he just, he, I think he, besides when he was the champion, I feel like he lives behind the eight ball, right? Like, so every time something happens to him, it doesn't just, it's not a one tiered uh, bad thing that happens. It's always yeah. two pronged. And this one is like the situation where they throw Aldo into, you know, to fill in for him. And it's, it's you're like, this is crazy because let's just say that Aldo wins. Mm. <sighs> yeah. Frankie Edgar is nowhere near no. a title shot again because nobody's going to want to see that fight. So I always look at it like, well, what is, how does that change the stakes? And for a guy like Frankie Edgar, you can't – I mean, that's about as as bad as it gets, <laughs> you know, to fall yeah. out of your own and then maybe not, not be able to get back to that shot, which he's been through before. So I thought about that a lot um, just from the Frankie Edgar standpoint. From the actual – there's a little bit of intrigue, I guess, in the sense that Max Holloway. I, I will say that I thought he worked over, uh, you know, Aldo so so big the first time that I just yeah. I didn't really I wasn't pining for that rematch. I thought a guy like Cub Swanson, yeah. obviously who's been coming up, would be the fresh blood um, to kind of go in there and uh, and get that shot because he, he's one. Of, I think that the the fan sentiment seemed to be on that side, and he seemed to want it. I was looking at just his Twitter and stuff like that. It seemed like he was more than willing to get in there and do it. So I was a little surprised that they went the Aldo route, um, especially given just some of the rocky terrain they went through with uh, Aldo yeah, through the last couple of years. Just, you know, he's he's not had a great relationship with the UFC, so yeah. who knows what's going on behind the scenes. But I was a little surprised, I guess a little disappointed, man. I would have I would have liked to have seen, I thought pretty, I was pretty convinced in my own guesswork that it was going to be uh, Cub Swanson stepping in there. Yeah, yeah that's, I, that's I, the I, I, was going I would have went yeah. Cub Swanson. It's like the most unlikely immediate rematch ever. This one, like, because it's the is. most unlikely. But the, the other piece of news we want to touch on before we let you go is uh, Bellator heavyweight tournament um, coming up. Scott Coker doing the heavyweight tournament again this time in Bellator, not Strikeforce. What do you think of that? Yeah. It's a, it's so the first time they did it, I, I like the idea, but it's so hard to execute, right? That's why Daniel Cormier ends up winning it, and it's yeah. just people like it never. You're looking at a a best laid plan whenever they do this. Oh, this is if everything goes perfect, this is what you're looking at. It never goes perfect in these things. So, what you're seeing this iteration of what we're seeing is um, is just a rough draft of what it'll end up being. And I, yeah. I think that that's always the one thing that if you go into it with that, like this will be altered. Probably some people that we're not even talking about will then enter the tournament, and who knows who how this will all play out. I think that's the realistic way to view it. But taken for granted that it comes out close i guess um to to what it's supposed to like the, the guy the eight guys they've talked about are all in it it's a lot of fun given that some of those guys 
are talkers. Some of them have never been heavyweights. Yeah. Some of them are, you know, kind of past their prime guys that you're a little bit like, like Fedor or Melianenko. Yeah, it's always fun to contemplate them, but you're like, really? Three yeah. fights through? I, I mean, it's hard to even fathom. Frank Mir, who hasn't been, I mean, so the, the, it's, it's, it's almost like, the, it's almost like that, um, you know, I hate to use the word the circus tent thing, but it's like, to me, it kind of fully embraces that because you have guys who are just coming up um, that make for, the the fun thing always is when you've never contemplated um, someone like Chael Sun fighting Fedor, you've never thought about Chael (laughs) fighting, you know, uh, Frank Mir. I mean, to me, these things are like, they kind of blow your mind. So I could see it being a lot of fun on that, and especially if somebody like uh, Rory McDonald somehow weasels his (laughs) way in there too, then it becomes a whole different thing too. But I'm going to try that. Oh. Nope. Just lost connection. Lost connection. That's how he comes back. Hope he comes back. It'll be a hang up and call back. Yeah. Definitely hang up and call back. So if the, if the, if the tournament plays out ultimately as they envision it, it could be a lot of fun. But we know how hard it is just to get, uh, you know, two guys to make it to the octagon or get into a fight anyway. So for the whole thing to come off, uh, I'm going to be a little skeptical, but I, I appreciate the innovation and thought in this whole thing. I do, but my query about it is, is why have they called it a heavyweight competition and not just an open weight competition? We've got no. four heavyweights, three light heavyweights, a middleweight and a welterweight trying to get into it. <laughs> exactly right. That's what they should have called it. You're right. I yeah. guess it's just because they wanted to make, uh, a heavyweight title. you know, every, make sure everybody was, um, a, above a certain weight because that seems to be the contention right everybody making 206 pounds yeah <laughs> it's a weird one. no it's definitely it's it, I, you know it's weird but we are oh i'm, I'm excited absolutely I'm um, excited. and weird. your colleague Ar- <laughs> your, your colleague ariel has also said the sources close to him yeah. say that bellator are working on fedor versus frank yeah, mir to be in the first well, dream match a couple of years ago but still. yeah this, this yeah. The, the, the former ufc heavyweight against this was yeah, the, the whole broadcast. who's the best heavyweight in the world moment so um Good fight, I think, to, to probably open it if it is that way. Yeah, I'm all about that, man. Um, and honestly, when you look back at the Strike Force tournament, it was pretty fun. It was great. I, <laughs> I loved it. Ended, yeah, I loved it. It fizzled because Strike Force was fizzling. The, the whole yeah. thing was ending. But um, as it was the first round, I remember that being a lot of fun. So uh, you got to kind of hope that. Uh, this one, because they're on more solid ground, obviously with Bellator and everything that's going on, maybe they can get behind it, promote it the right way, and uh, and make it that way. You know what I mean? I, but that would be a fine first fight. I'm gonna I'm gonna say a catchphrase because it's not true when I say it though. But I will literally say, you know, take my money. But we don't get it live here, so we will be illegally streaming it, so they won't be getting any money. <laughs> but if I could give them money, I would say take my money. I'm interested. Yeah. It's got me. It's all guys. It's it's uh, guys who aren't in the weight class. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's it's like one of the best fighters on the planet who's just deciding, yeah. The hell with it all fighting it. So what's... that's how it feels. It feels like it feels like Scott Coker and his guys are in a room and they're like, "What if we just did this?" And we, yeah. you know, that's how it feels. But I, I don't mind at all, man. I mean, when you're trying to distinguish yourself, um, and a lot of those guys, you're not sure what to do with them. Why not make Why not make it an eight man thing? So it's an eight man split interest. You know what I mean? Like who wins this thing? So in my mind, it's like as long as it comes across like it's supposed to, and and think and all the fights kind of happen the way they're supposed to. Perfect for them at this moment. Oh, you really do. Yeah. It for. It's fun. For a week of MMA that we've had, what a week it's been, what a week of news. And I wouldn't mind, we've left so many things out as yeah. well, but some week, and it was great to recap it with you, Chuck, and get your opinions and thoughts on it. <laughs> uh, shout what? out again to, if people aren't following you, I don't know why if they're into MMA, but if people aren't following you, where can they find you on Twitter and stuff? Just my name, Chuck Mendenhall. Uh, pretty irreverent on there, so you're not going to find any breaking news, but I'll make you laugh a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man. Listen it's an absolute pleasure chatting MMA with you again, and uh, we'll do it again in the future. But keep up the great work, and um, we'll talk soon. All right, guys. Take care. Cheers, Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, you, Chuck Mendenhall. Absolutely love talking, uh, get bringing him on here. We, 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 we've done it a little bit like the Luke Thomas way. Yeah. We brought him in and just sort of... Just open book let's, open book let's, let's, let's talk. talk some news let's talk let's, what was uh, happening what was in the news Conor McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was really wasn't it but yeah. in fairness you sort of have to talk Conor yeah. McGregor. so what we're going to do is now we're going to get a man on who was busy at the weekend himself he was the third man in the cage he was taking points for knees to the head he was taking points for outstretched hands that sounds lo- weird. He was looking great doing it. He was taking selfies with us, and he fanboyed and got one with Hoist Gracie. Um, but we're getting on the gentleman, Daniel Mulvaheady. Welcome back to obviously Fight Talk. And if you're looking on YouTube, you'll see the beautiful face that is. And if you're listening on audio, I'll tell you, we're joined by the gentleman, Daniel Mulvaheady. And this is going to be a weekend roundup 
of everything that happened in MMA over the weekend. Dan was on duty uh, at Bama 32. Um, so we're going to talk about Bama 32. We're going to talk a little Bellator 187. But we're going to start off at UFC Fight Night 120. So which seen Dustin Poirier taking on even Anthony Showtime Pettis. The main event. Let's hit it with the main event, uh, Rob Dan. So, Dan, firstly, welcome to obviously Fight Night. Yeah, welcome. Again. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, gents. Thank you. Good to see you in person on Friday night, which was nice. Yeah, it was nice seeing Next you. time, 100% we go and grab a beer. But as, as you guys know, it's so busy. You guys were upstairs, here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. And mixing with the celebrities and whatnot afterwards. So, yeah, I know your deal. Um, <laughs> We are the celebrities. So we are about. the celebrities. I was on the telly. Uh, sorry, <laughs> people mixed in with you then. Yeah. Uh, put up a great picture of a point of Guinness, and I thought, well done, barman. You pulled a cracker for an Instagram post. It was a beautiful looking point of Guinness. Yes, it was lovely. Went down well with a slice of pizza. <laughs> Referee's choice. Uh, main event, Rob, St. Dustin Poirier taking on Anthony Showtime Pettis. Um, oh, I have to say, starting it off, I thought Dustin Poirier looked magnificent at 55 yeah. again. He's really implemented a high pace in the game and sort of kept Anthony Pettis on the back foot, not allowing Pettis to um, get the angles to create his, kids, his kicks, to get off kicks. Poirier was mixing up the takedown beautifully and really put a hard grind and a hard pace on Anthony Showtime Pettis. Pettis, a couple of times, he got badly cut. Yeah. And he was sort of going for triangles and with the blood, the crimson was flowing and with that, it uh, was allowing Dustin Poirier to slide out. Yeah. Um, so, the blood was affecting him in more than one way. But for me, I thought Dustin Poirier is... is it's something you talk about where how Dustin uh, who Demetrius Johnson mixes up his takedowns yeah. with his striking and I thought obviously not as flowy and beautiful as, as, as DJ does it but I thought Dustin Poirier was mixing up his, his attacks beautifully in this fight and probably I dare to say that was the best looking Dustin Poirier I've seen yeah it's it's just unfortunate the, the finish because yeah. it was a weird one like it was completely legit nothing wrong with it it was a, an injury but it just didn't put the stamp on it that I'm sure he'd hoped it would put on it um, was a weird one, but it was a great performance. You could see uh, Dustin Poirier's hands really was causing problems for uh, for Pettis. But Pettis is really good with his feet. Sometimes he can he can be a little bit not poor with his hands, but he can uh, leave openings with his hands, and that's where uh, Poirier uh, got in there. But yeah, the, the blood really caused a lot of issues. Yeah. Uh, there was one moment in the fight that I wanted to ask Dan about. Um, He's just, here. Yeah, no, here he is there. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna ask him. Um, there was a moment in I think it was the second round. I'm not sure, but there was a, a big cut. On uh, yeah, Anthony Pettis, three cuts, yeah. yeah, huge cut over the eye of Anthony Pettis, and the blood was gone to his eye. And uh, they stopped the fight for the referee or the, for the doctor to take a look at it, which is fine. But the doctor cleaned it up a lot. Um, is that allowed? I'm not sure if if you're allowed to actually clean up his whole calls, face. He called for a bigger towel, as yeah, well a bigger towel, wiped a proper eyes. wiped it out just to, to to have a look. Is that is that okay or? Yeah, I've, um, look, the, the the rule is that you, the the cut can't be treated. Uh, um, during the round it can be treated in between the round that's where the cuts can come in but if the doctor felt that he needed to wipe it up to be able to assess that cut better um, whether it was from the blood you know getting the blood out of his eyes etc yeah so, so be it because then he can ask him like, are you good to continue can you see and he can make his assessment you know yeah. the, 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 par uh, the paramedics the doctor's there to make his uh, medical assessment and if to allow the fire to continue or not you know but yeah it, it's quite normal for, for the doctors to come in and clean up so they can assess the cut properly and obviously the thing the, one of the reasons they do clean all the blood away is to see if the cut it does carry on bleeding as well yeah, so they can tell if it's, uh, if it's a deep cut or not um, and again like I said but they can't treat it as in they can't put Vaseline on it or adrenaline or whatever it is the cut news that's what it happens in between Props rounds as well to the referee because when showtime pettis went back in the mat he sort of put his head up against the yeah cage, and the referee pulled and the referee him back like, no, yeah. no 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 that's yeah. not where i stopped you from yeah out there. Call, so yeah. uh great props to the referee yeah great performance i loved um Poré after the fight the call out was, the call -out was yeah, great yeah. because and um, you could see he was a little bit frustrated and you could see he was talking about the way fans and the way guys are saying that Poirier sometimes falls at that last hurdle when he gets against gets against a really uh, yeah. good top level guy he doesn't really make it this time he did and um, even though Pettis is slightly you know he, he's not the guy he used to be but um, he's calling for the winner of um, Gaethje yeah. Alvarez which and then, I, he wants and then he wants a title shot um, and I just thought that the whole post fight approach by Poirier was brilliant um, he probably should have got that Alvarez fight. You can see why he's pissed off that Alvarez got yeah, the yeah. Um, yeah. got the ultimate fire because that's a you know it's a big push getting the ultimate fire. You know as much as I don't like it, 
it's still a big push. It's a big exposure. So, um, yeah, lovely. Great um, performance. What great, I like uh, about it as well, Dustin Poirier, he said, I'm not one for talking shit, but next I want to fight the winner of yeah. Alvarez, Gage, and then I'm fighting for a title. Job done. That's the way to do it, though. Yeah, exactly. Home run. Um, somewhat, everybody thought the co-main event was um, the final curtain call for Matt Brown. He sort of navigated away from that now, but perhaps it should be the final curtain call for the warrior that is Diego Sanchez. What I noticed in this fight was Diego Sanchez, he was trying to really implement that wrestling game again. Landed a beautiful le left kick to the, the body, body yeah, to Matt that, Brown yeah. that caught Matt Brown in the liver. And it sort of went, ooh, this doesn't... And Matt Brown has sort of befell to that previously. Yeah. But uh, Diego then later on threw, um, threw a kick. Matt caught it, elevated uh, the foot up, pawed out to reach. And just as he got to there, the UFC decided to cut <laughs> to an empty press room and next minute they came back and Diego Sanchez was lying face down really? on the canvas. And we're all going, what, what the, the fuck, fuck happened? <laughs> um, and then John, what a finish, Matt Brown. And they're doing that and John Anik went, and we will be straight back with some pictures, pictures. of what happened. You're yeah. going, pictures? What are you on about? Somebody in the truck made an absolute mess. And he tried to rewind it as well. Yeah, they tried to rewind it. They tried to rewind it and it went backwards. <laughs> <laughs> but basically what happened was Matt Brown, it was really weird, he, he stretched out to find the reach yeah. and then threw a huge overhand lead elbow. Um, Diego yeah. Sanchez slightly bent down oh. and the elbow actually landed oh. on kind of on the back of the head. But Equilibrium. It was, but it was... How good the elbow was, yeah, was on the way down, Diego Sanchez kneed himself in the face, yeah. folded like a deck chair. It was an absolute... I saw, I saw the finish, and, yeah. and, it, and it was face plus. So, Rob, coming to your point, people going, oh, it was the back of the head, yeah. no way. No. I mean, yes, it was, don't get me wrong, it but it's, it's, as, it's the way uh, Diego has positioned his head. Yeah. Yeah. head. It's not as if Matt Brown pulled his head down and then through the elbow, exactly. um, so to speak. Uh, you know, so it was a very good elbow. And, you know, next thing you know, face plant. But yeah, it was yeah. good. I I thought it was a good fight and the finish of it. Anyway, yeah, what I saw. Um, but yeah, a lot of people messaged me saying, "No, oh, that should be a no contest because it was back of the head. No, no way, no way." Jesus, no. I love the range that Brown done. How he done it? He parted to feel the range. And then, a bit telegraphed. Diego Sanchez didn't see it and got caught. But yeah, you said it to me as well, Rob. The, Luke Thomas from MMA fighting yeah. done like a watch oh. party with him and his, his reaction, reaction to <laughs> the technical glitch is absolutely phenomenal it's just I need to look that out where oh. can I find that we, the, it's we, on his YouTube page it's, yeah. we actually posted it on our Facebook page so if you just scroll okay. down a little bit you'll, you'll yeah, find it it's, it's fucking it's it's hilarious it's just hilarious he absolutely yeah. freaks um, what the fuck? and I'm talking about the renaissance man is he making a comeback Andre Arlovsky fought a really big man in a nappy well, junior oh, Albini. Uh, Albini made the Reebok. Holy lama. I'd say he made the UFC thing. We're going to have to rethink these Reebok shorts, lads. <laughs> he made it look like Pampers. Um, in a fight that I honestly thought Albini, like three trunks of legs. Yeah. I thought he was just going to demolish Arlovsky. Um, but Andre Arlovsky looked good. Good movement. Yeah, for me, with Andre Arlovsky in this one, it was very defensively sound, yeah. which is sometimes the problem for Arlovsky because yeah. he likes getting into them little brawls. At times he did, but um, for most of the fight, he was really defensively sound. Great performance. New camp as well. Mike Brown was yeah. in his, uh, yeah. his corner. Yeah. Will we get another another uh, resurgence of Andre Arl Arlovsky? Arlovsky yeah. I don't think so, but it was a great performance. <laughs> Will we get a resurgence of Andre Arlovsky? <laughs> I don't think I don't, so. I don't think so personally. <laughs> but I do think that's a, a good win because I would have... We didn't do picks and I'll oh. I'll call myself out. I would have picked Albini. That was me, Terminator, gone. Yeah, exactly. So, um, good no, performance no. by Arlovsky. Defensively sound. He didn't, didn't look as chinny. Got caught a couple of times. But, um, yeah, great performance. Uh, do we just do a couple of standouts then? Yeah. Uh, the Rafaela Sunshow finish was fantastic. Man. I literally tweeted that I am going to be limping tomorrow looking at Matthew Lopez's inside leg. Holy shit. That was probably... His, his best performance in a long time yes. re you really put it all together and that was against a guy a guy who I think is a good prospect Some but he's not there. quite up to the level of the guys he's fought yet but it was phenomenal um, Clay Guida getting his first wow. finish since 2008 against uh, Joe Lowe Dan, Dan I know you haven't seen this have you have you seen Joe Lowe I've, I've, seen, I've seen the finish yeah um, I, and, I felt yeah. I, I did, I, I, did you say 2008 his first his finish, finish his first finish yeah Ah, damn. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I thought this is going to be fight tonight. Two of these are absolute bonus collectors. 
But um, I'm a big Joe Lozon fan. As Rob, as you as always say, I'd never like to tell a fighter to hang their gloves up because yeah. why would they listen to me anyway? Exactly, yeah. But for me, Joe Lozon, he's been in too many he's been wars. Lot of wars. He's taken a lot of punishment. When do we need to see him wear his blood for us anymore? Yeah. I think he's done every enough. Fight. And every I fight. honestly think it's time for Joe Lozon and Diego Sanchez yeah. maybe to think about giving it up. I hate, yeah, I hate saying that because yeah. it's it's completely their decision. Yeah. Who, who the fuck am I? Like? But like, and who the fuck is anybody to say in it? In fairness, but look at the fight Joe Lozon has He's taken look a the ton of damage. And, and as well, when he gets hit, he doesn't take a punch like he used to be able to take a punch. He gets hit and he, he wilts a little bit. You can see it in him. The uppercut from Clay Guida. What do you think of the finish? Oh, I thought it should have been stopped a little. Yeah. Me too. I think Lozon. It wasn't the worst. Went, it wasn't think, the worst. Yeah, but I think when Joe Lozon, when he went down, I think it was done. Yeah. And I thought when he landed, when Clay Guida landed one or two more shots, I think that it was, was definitely done. Yeah. And then it kept going. And you could almost see that Clay Guida didn't want to land any more shots. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was for me was the biggest thing I thought it should have been stopped like it's not oh my god that should have been stopped yeah, I, like, I can, I can should have been stopped I can see where the referee was going with it because Lozon was still trying to improve his position it's just I think that was more Lozon with muscle memory and, and just being experienced but you know Morez Dodson I literally tweeted um, either guy could win this and yeah. I'm not going to argue but to, for two judges to score a 30-27 yeah. and the other judge for more and the other judge to score a 30-27 for Dodson weird one very weird yeah very weird how can three people see a fight so differently happens <laughs> but in, you know, hold on quickly as well you can tell me while, while I was watching catching on some of the prelims mm -hmm. In between, John Anik announced that so one of the one of the scores had been changed to unanimous from a split decision to unanimous. Am I right? I missed that. Uh, yes. So, I think that was something with, to the scorecard or something. Was, um, was that wrong? Court McGee and Sean Court Strickland. Okay. Uh, one of the judges, when they marked their card, they scored it like I think let's say they said ten eight or something, and it was meant to be ten nine or something like that. So it affected okay. the scorecards. Like I can't I can't remember what way it was, but it looked like two judges looking at the card. Sort of, you know, they'd wrote a 10 and they scribbled it out to write a 9. You know, that sort of way, yeah. I think was, I think okay. that's what it was. Um, yeah. One that I have to call out, we, we can move yeah, on we to the other fights. Sage Norco, Sage that was Norco. the best Sage Norco. Sage, Sage Norco has improved leaps and bounds. Sage Norco, Sage Norco's hands have never looked that good. Yeah. His jab was beautiful, he was quick, he was explosive, which he always uh -huh. is. And he was really aware of cage awareness, looking up to the clock on... And there was a a one around. thing I love about watching these young guys fight, and, and you kind of seen it in, in this fight, was that they're kind of learning on the job in a way. Like, Sage Norco in the first round, doing great, look for a takedown in the end. I don't know, I can't even remember if he got it. I think he got it, but he, did, he, got, takedown he got it in the end. But Uriah Faber was like, you don't need to go for the takedowns all the time. Your, your, wor your striking's working. He's trying to, trying to build his fight IQ. Like, I know it's a great thing to get a takedown at the end. But if the strikers work and you're really hurting them, then continue. And you're kind of seeing that throughout the, the rest of the fight, and it's just great watching it. And Sage Norcourt looked great. Sage Norcourt looked excellent. Great. He looked really he looked great. His hands and yeah. his, his he's, back, he's back in the possible UFC star column. Well, you've got to look at Sage Norcourt came into a lot of pressure yeah. and stuff. He's only a young guy. Like he only finished school. Yeah. Like he's, he's, not, he's, only, he's only 19. Yeah, he's Not absolutely. Anymore. And he's going to be Ivan Drago's son in the new... Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> That's yeah. how the story goes. He, yeah. he's, 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 uh, he's gone for it. Yeah. Uh, let's move it on and let's I look must break at, you dude let's look at Bellator uh, 187 Dan we've covered extensively yeah. everything that happened um, <laughs> we spoke with, obviously we spoke with John Redmond so we sort of talked about it and we spoke with uh, Chuck Minnenhall earlier as well but Dan just you sitting cage side yeah. like commissioners surely there should be no way in hell anybody gets that close to the cage never mind the fact it was the biggest name in mixed martial arts no, I don't want to comment on it too much, but boy, the way Connor jumped over that cage, I don't think anyone was going to uh, yeah. stop him, if I'm honest. You know, he, 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 he got in there so quick, and it, it happens, you know. Um, the thing that people need to talk about is how well Goddard composed himself. I mean, boy, some, like, a lot of people are going, oh, he, Goddard pushed him first, etc. Listen, at the end of the day, as a referee, I'm still, or I say I'm, but as a referee, you're still in charge of that cage. You're still in charge of that fighting area, you know? Um, and he was just doing his job, making sure the people who shouldn't be in that cage are out of that cage, you know? And who's to say, I mean, only Mark can comment on this, but I think he 
he doesn't need to. But who's to say, even, even Mark might not even knew who the hell that was who jumped over the cage. Yeah. It could have been anybody. When you look at it the first time, I showed it to a couple of people. I didn't even mention it was Conor McGregor who yeah, jumped yeah. in the cage. They were like, what's that geezer doing fighting yeah. that fighter? That's what it looked like. He jumped on his, uh, his mates, uh, his powers, arms, and, and you know, it, it, it could have been anybody, you know? And people saying, oh, God, I shouldn't have done it first. Look, man, at the end of the day, it's, it's, our, it's the cage. We're in charge of it. You know, it, it did get out of hand. But I thought... It was handled okay, you know. God, I'd done what he had to do, and, and the whole time he was worried about Redman on the ground. You know, I mean, I feel sorry for the guy. <laughs> yeah. You know, he was on the ground, and everyone's trampling on top of him, and he still didn't know what the hell was going on. Yeah. Um, but well, that, the biggest thing you know, I, I honestly it. can't say my my thoughts. I think it's quite clear. I'm sure what majority of people have been feeling on social media. It's what well, well, the big thing for me, Dan, was it took away from some great fights. Yeah, it did. Uh, I thought yes. that AJ McKee Jr. Brian Moore fight was, was an a great absolute fight. Brian, yeah, classic. Yeah, going into it, I thought it was a tough fight for Brian Moore, um, but um, he really put a good of account of himself. Yeah, I thought he was going to get AJ out of there. In yeah, the second he looked round. he looked really really good. Good slick boxing, uh, kept coming forward. Um, didn't really give AJ McKee much space. AJ McKee works best at range because mm. um, he's that he was that really explosive guy who can cover so much distance at once. And he, Brian Moore was really pushing up against the cage a lot. Um, but it was, I thought it was a great performance by both. Um, you know, and a good test Excellent for AJ McKee. Yeah. Excellent. Janae Cabinet didn't need much uh, to get it out of there. Basically, the first fight, uh, first I combination or a bunch of the fight. I completely missed uh, that. Put uh, Maria Casanova in danger. 24 seconds was required. Janae Cabinet, uh, when she's hitting, um, most people don't take it. Yeah. You know, with a huge prospect. We spoke to her after and she spoke that she's addressing the weight. She yeah, needs she weight does. for this belt. She does need she to needs address, to address that. that, but man if this girl is hitting girls are falling over and it's nothing yeah. but impressive um, Kevin Ferguson Jr baby slice got a win as well by rear naked choke and I can honestly say we don't need to speak about this one too much because I did not see one second did you see this one Dan? Point. yes yeah. I did impressive yeah it was, <laughs> was alright do you know what like you said I, I say I, I sat there watching obviously I was cage side yeah. but again yeah. what happened a fight previous from that. Yeah. Um, that's what everyone was talking about yeah, behind yeah. me, you know. Yeah. Um, so yes, I did watch it. Was I impressed? I don't, I don't know. I can't say. And it's not for me to really say if I was impressed or not. Yeah. But I'm gonna just quickly jump in here, going back to the AJ McKee fight and Brian Moore fight. Yeah. I think credit's got to be given to um, Leon Roberts. Not many people saw that when that rear naked choke went in. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that you know the way he stopped that fight. Uh, it, it, he was. You know, he was out. You know, he saw his uh, Brian's leg. Um, I actually thought he kicked Leon, but he, I, when I watched the back, he was actually spazzing out, um, and then that's why Leon stopped stopped the fight because people go, "Oh, but he's okay." I'm like, "Dude, man, he was out." Crazy. You see Leon well, hugging him and rolling. taking his gun shield out afterwards. You know, no, so I thought that was a very good spot in that in, in that um, Rene Kid choke. Well done, Leon Roberts, um, who caused me the shit story from now on. Um, <laughs> a big shout as well to Paul Reds of Redmond taking the fight on short notice stepping in for his Bellator debut uh, he spoke and he said he wasn't really happy with his performance he felt the pop wasn't there um, Jesus Santos basically held on to a guillotine for the whole, whole first, first round. round yeah which was uh, mad but Paul Redmond took over then it was Paul Redmond show yeah. after that yeah you could see the the, the strategic mistake by um, Jesus we call him Jesus Jesus go with. <laughs> um, in the first round where he held on to that and then Paul Redman actually landed in a similar position in the second yeah. round, I believe, and um, held on for a minute. Seeing he couldn't get it, that was his experience, let it go, yeah. and uh, the fight uh, played out then. I thought it was a good performance, but I do see where uh, Redman's coming from when he was saying that, you know, taking those two fight camps back to back might have depleted his maybe his gas tank over the, the three rounds, but he liked how he looked good. I thought it was yeah. a good performance. You know, two big two big wins in the three arena yeah. win the space of a month. Yeah, and the first Irish man to fight um yeah. UFC Bellator. Bellator. Bama, Cage Warriors, KSW. KSW. Crazy. Not, here, not about TV. Uh, so then what they done was they ripped up the canvas, they took off the postcards, and they changed it all around to Bama. This man stopped talking shit cage side and <laughs> stepped in, put his black gloves on, and stepped into the cage to referee. Just imagine him. Daniel yeah. at the yoga, like with popcorn and said, fuck, it's all <laughs> shite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then Mr. Moverhead, he put his little black gloves on and got in and deducted two points <laughs> from Ion Pascu <laughs> taking on Omar Jesus Satana. Had to put a stamp on it straight away. It was a knee, uh, was it a knee to a grounded opponent, Dan? Yes, sir. Talk us through, why did you take two points? By the way, Ion Pascu won the fight by split decision. Why did you take the two points, Dan? 
Well, I, I, you know, like I keep saying to people, I don't have the luxury of replay. And, you know, we do our, we do our rules talk beforehand. We go to each change room, we explain exactly what a down fire is, et cetera, et cetera. And at that position, you know, I don't know if you've re- re-watched the fight because I know you guys were upstairs. Is um, uh, what was his name? Omar was on was on his all, all fours. His knee was on the floor, and um, Ion just pulled that knee back and, and kneed him straight to the head. Okay, so anyway, call time, picked it up, um, got a doctor in, assessed him. He was good to go, etc. And for me, that was uh, I, you deduct two points for intentional knee to the head. To me, it looked intentional. He was pushing his head down, he was pulling his knee back, and he threw that knee. Okay. Now, a lot of people going, oh, but it didn't do damage, he wasn't cut, etc. Listen, damage isn't just what you see visually. Yeah. He could have, had, he, could, he could have, so he, he did, I mean, the way he got up afterwards anyway, it looked like he had, a, he had a mild concussion anyway, but the doctor thought he was okay to continue, and he said he was okay to continue, which is fine. But again, need to make that clear. I took two points away because I felt at that specific time that, um, that I had to make the call that it was intentional, you know, it, it was caused with intent, you know, and, and and, and, I, and I feel like also it, it caused a, a bad concussion to him. Um, and I'm going to be absolutely honest here, maybe watching it back on the replay a um, couple of times afterwards, maybe it was two-point deduction a bit harsh? Quite possibly. I definitely would have taken a point about whether it would have been one or two. But at that specific time, I had it uh, in my head, it was caused with intent, you know. Um, so, yeah, I definitely would have taken a point away. I, you know, I'm, an, I'm an honest guy. Could have been one, could have been two. By that time, yeah. like I said, I don't have the luxury of replays. So, yeah, yeah it was two points, and that's why. That's, Very honest. That's, that's fair play, too. Just as a, you know the way the new rules came in, do you, Bam and I corporate that, could you not go to look at a replay? Could I? Well, could I use, we don't, well here, we don't use replay. I know the player on the big screen... Um, so, so for some um, for the fans and all that, and and sometimes it's nice when they play it and you hear this. <laughs> Ooh, you're like, okay, yeah, that was a down the punter. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, obviously I can't look at a screen and keep my eye on the fighter while I'm giving him instructions and I'm dealing with him with the doctor. So no, um, but like I said, I, I'm glad. Sometimes if I, I I don't want the replay to make all my judgments because at that specific time I knew it was a foul and I felt that it was with intent you know it wasn't as if it just grazed him and it caught him or it was thrown by mistake I felt that it was done with intent so it is what it is well look you could have come on here and not said a thing I thought yeah. you know, took two points best of luck to you but now fair play to you Dan yeah um, <laughs> The big fight uh, as well. Another one that stood out for us was Dylan Took taking on David Kalsa. It was the return. Don't call it a comeback. He was reborn. And Dylan Took looked excellent in there. Yeah. Um, set a lot up. A left kicks, left side of shots for David Kalsa to turn into the power kick, uh, the right kick. And it was a beautiful head kick and punches to finish it off in round number two. Um, for me, I think fight of the night award for me. Got on the Bama side of things goes to Dominic Wooding and Blaine O'Driscoll. Great fight, I yeah. think two incredibly talented young fighters, and they really showcase that. Yeah, and them two, uh, two look great. Um, it didn't look like he took that look that much time off. And sometimes, you know, he's not as experienced as a lot of other fighters who maybe take time off, come back and look great. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's impressive to see. Still so young, takes a lot of time off, comes back, looks great. Just thought it was funny. Garrett Day Davis was uh, sitting behind me chatting away. He was like, he's going to finish him by a head kick. He's going to finish him by a head kick. And then he does. Yeah. That was a, a nice little call. Um, he on kept the saying left head kick. Left, I have to, I have to okay, say yeah. that he kept, he didn't get a right. Yeah. He got a half right. He got a half right. He got the limb right. Um, Blair and Driscoll fight was uh, brilliant as well. Uh, cracker. Dominic Wooden is an absolute beast. That guy is someone to look at. Yeah. Uh, so is Blair Driscoll, but great performance by Wooden. And again, Blair, a young fighter, a lot of pro- a lot of uh, time to to move on for yeah, this. And I definitely don't think that's the, uh, nowhere near the last way you're going to see a Blair Driscoll. No. Seriously talented fighter, but so is Dominic Wooden. Great fight, fantastic. Jesus was an absolute cracker. Yeah. Uh, Moe Eddie was back in the cage then for the. Um, Co-main event uh, went to the judges' scorecard. Another great fight, Dan. I believe you took points on this one as well, Dan. You were like, uh, yes. <laughs> you were like, <laughs> you were taking. But now you get, we'll let you explain now yeah. in a minute. But the uh, champion uh, Andy Young took on the challenger and Daniel Barres. We had a new champion um, majority decision. You took a point for, I believe, Daniel with the outstretched hands, just stretching the hands out. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. I did. You know. Well, um, as you know, with the, with the new rule sets, uh, um, the fighters now have to have their outstretched hands or, or as their arms extend. 
if they got their fingers pointing forwards at Suez, you know, after you know after warning them, we're, we're in. It's, the rules there for us that if we want to implement a point deduction, we can, okay? Rather than just going, watch your fingers, watch your fingers, watch your fingers. Now, let's take a couple of steps back. Bear in mind, Daniel Berry's English is very little, okay? However, when I was in his change room giving his rules talk with his um, translator, I, you know, went through this about the extended fingers, about the down the pun, and there are two things I really went through. Um, and he, he was clear. I mean, look, how, how many times you even see me in the background going, look, Keep your fingers or your fist closed as you extend your arm. That doing that and pointing to my fingers, going watch your fingers. I'm sure he understood. So after extensively, extensively uh, explained to him, look, keep your fingers in, keep your fingers in. I did decide to deduct a point. Why? Look, at the time it didn't. It, it he hadn't poked Andy Young in the eye. Okay, but it was going that way. Okay, I I could see. It. Now I had to make a judgment call because look. If I waited for Andy to get poked in the eye and then uh, for whatever reason, let's say we brought a doctor in, he couldn't continue and just all the other crap that would have happened with it, okay? I'm there to prevent that from happening, okay? Yeah. Now, if that means giving him a warning, he doesn't do it. Give him another warning, he still doesn't do it. Give him another warning. And look, I'm, I have to take a point away because if I didn't take a point away and he'd done it again and it really did, damage, like I said, damage Andy or affect the fight, and it'll be like, oh, hold on, ref, how many times you going to warn him without deducting a point? And then it happened again. Um, so obviously, yeah, I did deduct a point from him and he understood why I deducted the point. And then it happened again. Um, this time it looked actually looked more worse than the first time when I stopped there because he actually pushed on the face. And you could see him, he put his hand in his head. He was like, oh, no, no I've done it again. And I said, look, I don't want to take a point away, but if you do do it again, I will do that, okay? I'm not there to take points away from anybody unnecessarily. So he understood it, and the fact that he actually this time understood the mistake he'd made, um, I was like, okay, look, I'm gonna, and it hadn't affected the fight, um, as in, like, it didn't really cause a foul or an injury to Andy, but made gave a firm warning to him that if it does happen again, I will be deducting points. And that's the reason why, you know, and with these... Someone made a valid point, and it, you know I made it to them as well. I don't want to take points away because these guys have been, especially these smaller guys I find that we've been training like that, you know, having their John Jones style, so to speak, with their fingers out. It does take a while for them to adjust into that, uh, in, into using these rule sets of keeping their hands closed, etc., rather than waving their hands at the front. Um, but at the end of the day, rules are rules, and it's there for me to use because a lot of people said you shouldn't have taken a point away or or you could have waited until a foul had happened. But look, damned if you do. Damned if you don't. I just find as well, Daniel Barres, he's, he's coming from a Muay Thai background. So yeah. it's yes. A, it's our pawn. It's something that you use then again. Yep. When you're fighting Muay Thai, you have the closed glove, so it's not effective. I'll just keep doing that. <laughs> just showing off the watch. Just going watch there, yeah. Um, but uh, your co-main event, seeing Alex Lahore taking main on event. Richard Kiley. The champion held on to his belt with knee bar um, in the first round. We were talking to Richard earlier in the show. Obviously, a lot of hype, a lot of talk, a lot of uh, back and forth. Did the main event deliver? Uh, yeah, like it was. It was a good fight. It was a good finish by Alex Lahore. Um, it's unfortunate that um, Richard went in with an injury. Yeah. Um, he believes it'd be a different fight, and maybe it would have been a different fight. So that's unfortunate. I would like to see a hundred percent Richard or closer to one hundred percent Richard against Alex Lahore. But yeah, it was a good fight. Good finish by um, Alex. He's one to watch certainly. And Alex, interestingly, called out. I am Pascu. Pascu, yeah. Um, yeah. In post fight. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's a <laughs> teammate, you see, Dan's involved here. Dan's involved. Teammate, I'm not a involved. No, I'm not. I'm not team. That's I just train down the gym. No, but I, I, it just it's good to see a fighter who's, who's staying active. You know, yeah. um, I think it's pretty cool this day and age. Um, fighters just just wanting to fight, and I also go give go give credit where credit's due to Richard. I tell you what I took from it, right? Is if you've got a knee injury, instead of wearing one knee pad, you wear two knee pads. Oh, yeah. Well done. Because so many times you have fighters wearing one knee pad or, or one anklet, and you're like, dude, you've just given away what one's your bad ankle, you know, or which one's your knee. And it's got to be one. I know it's got to be one of the two, but yeah, I thought, I thought that was good, uh, was a good idea wearing two two knee but, um, two knee pads. That's it. Funny, Richard said when we were speaking to him that uh, he believes the that, yeah. corner was screaming to go for the knee very early. Yeah, he so believes he knew. He, he thinks he knew about the injury. Possibly, so, yeah. Yeah. Somebody. So, uh, someone's a snitch. <laughs> um, but Dan, it was great seeing you in person. Yeah. No, it was. It was. And like I said, maybe next time I'll selfies. get this earlier. Huh? I was in one of your famous selfies. Yes, he was. 
Mm. Wasn't it cool that Hoist Gracie was there? I, I had I had a uh, had a fanboy moment, so you yeah. kept on shouting at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, come here. I've done the exact same fanboy moment in the hotel. Yeah. Yeah, it, was, it was good, and, and 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 for today or yesterday, rather, it'd be 24 years since he since yeah. became the UFC yeah. champ. It was a uh, pretty cool man. Well, Isn't it weird that that rolls with? It was uh, yesterday, it was, last year, that um, Conor yeah. McGregor became history, yeah. maker, yeah. yeah. champion. Yeah, uh, everyone's making history, huh? It's pretty <laughs> cool. And I'll tell you this, Goldie, for me, honestly, I've got to put this out there. When you him and Jimmy Smith were doing their rehearsals, ah, uh, it was ah, uh, right, okay, it was not. Goldberg and, and, and Rogan doing it by him and Jim, but Goldberg, man, <laughs> honestly, he's on point. That guy, that guy's on point. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was raging. I was hoping to see Mike Goldberg and get him to. We were supposed to chat with those. Jimmy after yeah. it, but uh, unfortunately, it's the way it played it's out. It's when we they couldn't... flipped it round. Yeah. When they flipped it from yeah. Bam at the Bellator. That's fucked it us for us. an interview. Yeah. yeah. Damn it. Oh, well. God damn. Yeah. But Dan, it was great seeing you. It was always good seeing you, man. I wish I could get an even earlier flyer. And because it's on a Friday, I take it you guys were working in the morning, right? He was off. I took, the, I took the day. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll bet I'm on next time. We could meet up earlier. Then. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do it. Well, Definitely. Yeah, I'd rather meet up after because then we can drink alcohol. Yeah, but our hotel's so far away. Yeah, well, tell the bomber people to stop being so tight arsed. Yeah, and stop putting the punches in, that in the fucking Gibson. <laughs> Bellator were in the Gibson. Be fair, the Green Hall Hotel ain't that bad. It's alright actually. It's just a bit far away. In fairness, you guys come in Newcastle or not? Oh, I doubt it. Doubt it. Too, I doubt. I doubt it. Too close to the big what? man in the red suit. Come on. No. You can come. No. <laughs> you, you can come. You can come. <laughs> Dan, but Wendy Dan said I can go. Um, yeah. uh, before we go, actually, story of the Gibson. I have to give a, a, a shout out to that old doorman in oh, the Gibson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This man was the Schindler list of the residence bar. He had a list, and if you weren't on it, you were going oh, yeah. nowhere. Yeah. He was... Uh, a, uh, poor uh, poor Jim. Hold on, because so, I saw your tweet. You said to Jim Edwards. Yeah. Oh, we try to get... Was he on that list? No. No, no. Poor Jim Edwards. He got, he got a room <laughs> well, he got key. No, no, he didn't. He got a room key oh, off, okay. I think, with Gareth Day Davis and Somebody. went up with the room key. And your mom was like, no, no I know you're, you're not, not staying you're here. Not staying I know here. you're not staying here. You're not getting in. <laughs> This is the same man at KSW. Yeah, that refused that us. He wouldn't let us Point in blank. because we were at the fight show. And we were like, but we were media. No, nah, we're not letting anyone from the fight <laughs> show in. So then, right, we walked, funny story, we walked in and we're sitting talking to Goddard and Leon Roberts. Uh, just name drop all over the place now and all. But we went and we queued for the bar. And as we're queuing for the bar, Goddard <laughs> walked in. And your mum was like, no, you have to walk around the far end. And there was about 25 people behind us. And I looked and I went, ah, Mark, I'm on jump in. He says, you want me on your show, lads, yeah? And we were like, yeah. He says, well, you have to let me in front of you in the queue. <laughs> <I> just jumped <laughs> the he jumped the queue. So we held a spot for Goddard. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that old man, the doorman, what a oh. man. He is a man that loves his job. Oh, yeah. Well, this should get him on the show next time. Yeah, get him he on the actually, show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, if he was on cage side at Bellator, no one would have got into the cage. <laughs> Get that man in the Gibson as part of the Bellator staff. Nobody be getting in that cage. God damn. Only All right, on that note. Yeah, yeah peace. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are getting chucked out soon, aren't you? Yeah. We're getting sure, chucked yeah. out for him we're fucking nearly, shouting all over. We're nearly starting work. Never mind getting chucked out. So it's <laughs> time to start work again. Dan, it's a pleasure as always. And always. It was great always. seeing you, mate. It was great seeing you. Thank you. Cheers, man. Great. Bye-bye. Adios. Bye-bye. Well, that's been 89 I got emotional in the end but that's great honest to god get that I, I'd say you could honestly make a meme a meme whatever you want to call it of that old Gibson doorman standing at Bellator stopping yeah, Connor from stop. getting in the, no you're not getting in you so. broke the law yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're not getting in you violated the law Look, we can't serve you beer. You're not a resident. What yeah. a man. What a legend. I love him though. And he, then I went up to him and yeah, I was like yeah you got real brass and you got brave I've never seen Robert what? Parlin you sort of went no Get no, I asked in. him very nicely. I just went yeah. up and I said, ah, come on, just let come. We want one beer. We were working over there. We're just going to get one. He's like, if I let you in and then somebody else comes and gets too full, I'm like, we're having one, I promise you. And he's like, ah, no, there was an accident here the other week. Some fella having yeah, a drink. Yeah, he, was, he wasn't a resident. He fell down the stairs and now it's all a big fucking... The one thing they said to me, the younger door man said to me, oh, we, we're not insured to serve beer this late. And I said, mate, you're the hotel... You have a license in the, your bar till half twelve. You've closed the bar at 12. ten to twelve. Yeah. I've only had one. 
Yeah. I'd like another one. <laughs> and he was like, No. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good good counter yeah, argument. Well done. Well done. Well done. Uh, this has been obviously Fight Talk 89. Uh, big shout out and thank you very much to Richard Coyley for coming on, to John Redmond for coming on, to Chuck Minnenhall again. Great talking, Chuck again. Great talking to all the lads. That was probably course. a long one, was it? Daniel Movahedi. Probably was a long one. Shout out as always to Fight Star Ireland. Oh, it's there. The Fighter's Choice. Everything you need under two roofs. Go check them out and tell them we sent you. <laughs> MMAMix.com. They're obviously good. Just a wit. Obviously, fight talking. www. Feel supreme. You met him on on, uh, on uh, Friday, Friday as well. UK. Nice yeah. dude. Well done, Matty. Matty, I do apologise. I absolutely walked past you. <laughs> Who is your man saying hello to me? Oh, I am the, I am the here. world's <laughs> worst at um, being sponsored. <laughs> yeah, being sponsored. But uh, who yeah. the fuck is this guy? But um, no, go check nice him out. Nice um, when when you're buying stuff online. Type in Fight Talk at the checkout. We get 10% off. But yeah, mate, do apologise. Uh, yeah. It was nice to see you. And then, because I was real, but I have to talk, but I have to interview, I have to talk, I have to interview. So, yeah, whatever. Yeah. It's been 89. It's been emotional. Yeah. It's a crazy week for MMA. Cra- crazy week. And um, we have a lot of coverage of MMA. Check out links and yeah. all the little pictures that come up now in a minute. And you click one. And uh, Charlie Ward, and we, we spoke to some fans yeah. uh, somewhere up here. Crazy what? Jeez, man. And they, what, a, pr- yeah. what a crazy week for MMA. This is why we love the sport, though. It's madness. There's always yeah, talking points. Yeah, it's always weird. Yeah. Unfortunately, this wasn't the talking point we wanted. No, but it's a talking point. But it's a point. talking point. We've <laughs> talked about it. Let's see what happens with it. This has been 89. You've been beautiful. Subscribe! Subscribe.